It's time for Mac Break Weekly. There's a lot to talk about. Of course, Apple spanks Facebook and Google. Uh, the Apple FaceTime bug. We'll take a look at Apple's quarterly results in beautiful, colorful charts with Jason Snell. He's here along with Andy Anako and Alex Lindsay. Mac Break Weekly is next. Netcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is Mac Break Weekly, episode 647, recorded Tuesday, February 5th, 2019. The Emoji Curmudgeon. Mac Break Weekly is brought to you by ZipRecruiter. Hire qualified candidates the smart way to take your business to the next level. Try ZipRecruiter free at ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. And by Atlassian. Atlassian software powers the full spectrum of collaboration between IT teams and the rest of your organization. Visit Atlassian.com slash IT to see what IT can be by giving their products a try for free. And by WordPress. Turn your dreams into reality and launch your website at WordPress.com. Get 15% off any new plan at WordPress.com slash MacBreak. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show where we talk about Apple's latest. And we have the six colors guy here. He, did you bring your graphs? Uh, I always have my charts and graphs. You have with charts and a pointer. And <laughs> no, it's all it's all on my iPad now. It's all digital. The Jason charts, the graphs. Snell is here. And Counting yeah, you did. I loved your State of Apple article that you did oh, the last report week. Card. Yeah, the report card. Cool. And that was, I presume, followed up by, have you done your graphs for the Apple uh, uh, Yes, results? I did that too, yeah, yeah. of course. you got to do those Is that right an all-nighter for you? Oh, no, that's, I've got it all scripted. I just put in the numbers and run an Apple nice. script and it all, or a, a shortcut if I'm on iOS and it just outputs all of them. See, there they are. They're, uh, yeah. Highly, I think that's Colorful. the report card. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's, yeah, the, that's the I got the, card. I got a template. I can chart anything if I want to. <laughs> <laughs> Please don't chart me. Please don't chart me. That's Andy Anako's chortle. Andy, of course, with WGBH Boston, Boston Public Radio, and at anako.com, I-H-N-A-T-K-O.com. Soon to be, are you moving? Are you moving? Soon to be elsewhere? Did you say you were setting up another site, Andrew? Uh, yes, I did say that. <laughs> we'll to leave it at that. Have, okay, fine. I haven't, I, haven't, I haven't announced anything yet because I'm still building stuff and still. Oh, still I, I don't want another fire festival situation <laughs> on my hands. So. <laughs> you can buy tickets now. The entire Instagram community is turning green, waiting for Andy's new website. And and you'll be able to buy things on the site using Andy Bucks. And most people are putting at least two thousand dollars into part. their Andy Bucks account. <laughs> You know, so that they'll, they'll have the funds ready when we make things available for oh, sale. We were talking about the dueling fire festival <laughs> documentaries, one on Netflix and one on Amazon Prime. And that was, yeah, that was one of the things they did to try to quickly raise money. Put some money in the wallet, please. Our electronic wallet of, th of, of happy fun bucks that you'll be only able to spend at fire festival. <laughs> and totally ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Alex Lindsay from the Pixel Core. Man, I, this is an embarrassment of riches today. Renee has the day off, and so we replaced him. With Jason and Alex, Andy, you're outnumbered. Well, I'll, I'll, yeah, that's, that's true. But see, I have that sort of distance from the <laughs> ah, Apple campus that's ah, necessary for rational thought. Very clever. <laughs> if you were in L.A. right now, you would see these, uh, you know, the Grammys are Sunday. You'd see these Memoji billboards going <laughs> up featuring <laughs> Grammy nominees all over Los Angeles. There's C uh, Casey Musgraves. Um, that's an interesting way to both promote the Grammys and Memojis. Apple, uh, I presume, went to the artists to get uh, permission to do these. It's kind of cool. Think? One of them is upside down. I don't know who that is. <laughs> Someone right by when they finished it were like, oh, no. It does kind of demonstrate that the Memojis look nothing like <laughs> the person. Well, it's kind of the anime version of the person. Yeah, kind of. Kind of. You know. it's the, well, also the Momoji version of me didn't have to shave a half hour ago. So that's, 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 that's not, that's not <laughs> that's a downside. Handy. Do you use, we were talking about this in iOS today. Do you use, anybody use Momojis still? No. I don't, it, 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 it was funny. I was thinking about this the other week. And I think Megan also was uh, tweeting about it today or yesterday. And I noticed that it was because of the sound. I just want to be able to turn the sound off. 
Like if I when I was doing my kids, I just want to do expressions. Yeah, she said that when you're smiling and you're not saying anything, you still get lit mouth sounds. Well, you yes. get lit mouth, and you hear that whatever's going on in the train or whatever. But <laughs> yeah. you just want to do something funny and send it. You just don't want to say anything right. about ninety percent of the time. Stick your tongue out. And it's literally one little button, and I would use it all the time. ASMR emoji. ASMR. But but that's the yeah that's yeah. the that's the thing that bothers bothers so me most. So you can about. you can um, <laughs> if you pose for uh, an image, you can actually like drag it out like a sticker. And that works, but but I want to do the expression. Yeah, you want to do the animation, you know, like like a wink or a, or a some you know some kind of funny expression. But then I means I have to embed audio into it, which I don't want to do. And and I feel like that I think Apple will fix that. Yeah, because I think that Probably so. I don't think I'm the only one. So this uh, this maybe this is going to get you going because there are three new Animoji characters in the beta that came out today, the 12.2 <laughs> public beta. There's the shark mm. with his soulless eyes. Animoji shark. <laughs> do, do, do. I'm there kind were, of surprised that Apple no, hasn't timed kidding. Animojis with movie releases. You know, with Pixar releases or such with an Avenger releases. There. There's such an opportunity Snapchat to have no, that. Well, because, right? because they sure don't want a Pixar character like saying naughty things no. in, a, in a private chat. Oh, Maybe Andrew. not Pixar, but I, but I do think that, that there would be... There's got to be a some Gilbert Godfrey that emoji. That'd be it's okay. A, I'm go. surprised that this is one of those features that's linked to iOS updates. Right, like I, I'm constantly yeah. surprised at what they choose. To like you know, we can't add new Animoji without doing an entire iOS update, and I can't decide whether that's just a decision that they made that they have to live with, or whether it goes in the same bin as e emoji updates, as like reasons people actually will update their phone. Mm. They're not going to update their phone for their security update necessarily, but they might do it to, you know, because <laughs> of the FOMO of some new Animoji or new emoji. And maybe there's a whole. Bunch of people that we don't know that are using in emojis every day, all day, and we just are missing out. We might be just too old. There will it's be a, an owl, and in addition to the shark, there will be an owl, giraffe, and the one I'm most excited about, the warthog. I just, I just, all right. I, I will jump right back onto in emojis when I get for a, five seconds. Oh. No, no, no. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll use it all day when I, when I get a, um, a honey badger. Honey badger. I would, I would, I'd be I'll really be getting all these messages badgers. from Alex saying, "Honey badger, oh, don't care." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I don't care. Honey <laughs> badgers are so 2018, Alex. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. So here's what else is in 12.2. Do you use the beta, Jason? Anybody use the uh, betas? Not of these interim betas because I'm always worried they're going to trash my Me phone. Me too. In the summer, summer of betas. Yes. I used to do the public beta. <laughs> I think on the last phone I did, but I just decided I want stability. I don't. It's it's not worth it to me to know yeah, ahead of unless time. Unless there's like a really major feature, which they very rarely roll out in these interim updates. Because Apple let's News be in honest, Canada. Almost everybody is working on iOS 13 at this point at Apple, oh, yeah, right? So, so yeah. this is the end of this. New screen mirroring icon and control center. New full screen Apple TV remote control center interface. <laughs> new speakers and TVs and home <laughs> app settings. More detailed yeah. Apple Wallet UI. Yes. Yeah, Actually, the most interesting thing I think in there is this idea that just they made these announcements that they're going to do AirPlay support and HomeKit support in a bunch of TVs. Right. This beta enables um, TV control in control center. In the so, home app, you've so got you can turn on the TV and, and change the yeah, volume of the TV and do all yeah. sorts of television set things that you previously couldn't do. That's good because I keep forgetting I don't have to use my funky little Apple TV remote. I can use the one on the you can use your watch the phone or, the, or even the watch. Yeah, yeah, you can. And presumably, in addition to the phones that have been announced. Uh, people who do like plugins for Homebridge, that which is that great piece of software that makes anything a HomeKit device. Um, I would imagine that they will jump on this for other smart TVs and try to bridge the gap so that you could do like on and off input control, volume control, stuff like that um, directly over HomeKit. New privacy setting in Safari, you can turn off motion and orientation data. We yeah, learned that's this that's really interesting that some there are companies using this information it will break some apps if you turn it off i don't know if it's off by default but it is a setting in uh, ios settings in safari hmm. yeah it's it's really interesting there's also there's in addition to like a website tracking there's also a paper from uh from researchers at mit uh, demonstrating that it is possible to get a good guess as to what someone's unlock code is based on gyroscope data 
Wow, so, maybe that's it. So wow, it's 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 not it's 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 uh, it's an example of the holistic approach to security that Apple has. Where I'm sure that they're aware of the real possibilities, but they're also like there is no legitimate reason for most websites that are not involved in AR to have access to that data. So we're just going to block it by default. That kind of makes sense because that's why they did it in Safari. Because you could, if you were malicious in Safari, pop up what looked like uh, maybe the unlock code screen. And then watch the motion data, and if you were sophisticated enough, I guess figure out what your unlock code was. So that's or, interesting. Or, or at least how many are, digits. Yep. Whereas an app, if you downloaded the app, it's less of an issue. Um, I wonder though if they'll if they'll is that a, that's not a currently a permissions in the apps motions and orientation data. I don't. Think I think so. they just want to have so. control so that you, if you're a developer, you're going through the Apple rules and of yes, engagement as opposed as to should. just anybody, yeah. anybody able to do it. Safari will also warn now about websites that don't uh, support HTTPS. This has been coming for a while uh, on the desktop, of course, and that's a big, uh, big deal in terms of uh, security. Yeah. That the, the address bar is another big point of vulnerability. Uh, Google, for instance, is rolling out changes so that if someone types, if someone types in like Amazon instead of Amazon's, you know, it's, it's not going to take it's not going to take you to someone who bought that address thinking that, oh, someone's going to be able to someone's going to mistakenly type in this URL. And maybe we can get their login credentials. Uh, and so this will there's a lot of changes afoot across a couple of different companies. They're trying to make the address bar a little bit more robust as a as a point of attack when when will this come out if they're doing public it's a couple of weeks later or a month later or anywhere from a, as short as a week i've seen but okay. mostly about a month okay and and i presume ios 13 is slated for the fall with release of new phones yeah i would imagine that they're starting to do their turnover now where they're going to start moving ahead i've heard a couple of people talking somebody was talking about how there aren't there have been any updates to shortcuts lately which right. is an apple app that's in the store and that's you just get the feeling that engineers yeah. are turning their <laughs> attention to working on because you, if you think about it June is when they need to have a shippable right. public beta of right. iOS 13. So right. this is about the time when they all start switching Crunch. over. And they might do bug fixes on the old version, but they're really all about the new versions that we're not going to see for six months, five months now. Kind of a surprise uh, that one of the things that uh, Apple is allowing in iOS 12.2 is AT&T's 5G <laughs> designation. Now, I've seen a headline saying Apple approves of it. That doesn't mean they approve of it. They just mean they're not... They're not blocking I'm, it. I'm not surprised at all because I remember very distinctly getting 4G on my iPhone uh, back in the uh -huh. day when it's when it wasn't an LTE iPhone because I happened to have near my house one of their upgraded 3G towers and it said 4G. And still occasionally I see that when I am not in an LTE area. It says 4G and I laugh and laugh because that's <laughs> AT&T's uh, enhanced 3G that they called 4G. And I don't know whether Apple's policy is just to kind of go along with whatever their carriers are providing and this is carrier branding so they need to do it. But it's not new because they did the same AT&T gimmick uh, the last time AT&T decided to jump the gun and claim to be a G ahead. Mm. So just to be clear, I, I saw the one headline that said Apple's endorsing it. It's not that they're not, they're endorsing it, they're just not prohibiting it, but I wouldn't expect them to prohibit it. The carriers are allowed to designate whatever they want, I presume, up there. I mean, they, yeah. they maybe they could say no, although I don't know the deal, details of their contract, whether they negotiated that in or not but they instead they did the work in ios to enable that little 5g e whatever <laughs> thing that, ironic because no iphone supports 5g in fact no phone in existence right. currently supports 5g that's how at&t gets you <laughs> like no no we do we totally do we added a g yeah. it's right here it's what do you there, mean you see, what yeah, are you talking the, about it's the, it's the nigel tufnell approach to speed upgrades it's well you know how like most phones are Isn't 4g <laughs> but we, we go 1g more yeah uh, according to Ars Technica, uh, AT&T's 5GE stands for evolution. Sure. <laughs> but it's really 4G LTE. Advanced LTE features, but they've been in the LTE spec for years, like 256K yeah. QAM, 4x4 four four MIMO. It's literally what they did with 3G, where yeah. there was a, the most yeah. advanced 3G at the time, which was much faster than sort of your generic 3G. And it, they decided to brand that 4G, even and, and, though it wasn't now, 4G. What, I, what I'd like to know is with someone who has five, this 5GE, 
is testing it. Like, does it actually have better speeds? Because it, it actually may be two or three times faster than than the current LTE. And and, and it's in AT&T's best interest to make sure that it's faster. Well, here's, say it's not enabling it. It's already there. It's already as fast as it is. It just doesn't say it. it doesn't, and the update will the also AT&T is... The laggard here, Verizon, T-Mobile, and Sprint have all supported these standards for some time. <laughs> so they just, they just don't label it 5G. Yes, exactly. See, but AT&T said, well, we're going to go through well, all the trouble of putting this in. We might as well get something for it. Mm -hmm. AT&T yeah. says, <laughs> well, 5G evolution is our first step on the road to 5G. Oh, boy. Which is, you know, that road, the by the way, is going to be a really long road. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's right. Yeah. I mean, that's that road, right. the road to 5G I, is like a decade away. Uh, I mean, eight, well, AT&T says it's real 5G network. Will be available nationwide in early 2020, so it's a year in, off. Uh, nation, and by nationwide, we mean the center of cities. Uh, <laughs> About 12 uh, cities. 12 cities, yeah. uh, but across the nation, it will be 12 cities. Oh, very important distinction. Yeah, yeah, like like not you know, everywhere in the nation. Yeah. We'll no. have it in Boston. We'll have it in LA. Goes all the way exactly. left to the right. And a couple in between. And 12 other cities. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Mount, that's, Mount that's what View, nationwide. Cupertino. Yeah, <laughs> the red. I, I just, you know, that I map this, is going to be like red dots. I just hope that doesn't poison people's idea of 5G because if they think, oh, I've got this 5G phone. Well, actually, it doesn't seem much faster than what I've got right now. Because as we're talking about uh, with real 5G, much, 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 much faster and also much, much, much lower latency, which means that you could do things like a, a self-driving car that's not even necessarily self-driving. It could be it could be piloted remotely by somebody just as almost just as accurately as somebody actually in the cockpit. So this is 5G is interesting, A, because of all the infrastructure that's going to have to be built in to make it work, but also of all the new stuff that it's going to enable. So I'd hate to I hate for people to think, oh, why why bother like why bother installing all this new infrastructure? Why why bother uh, why, why bother all this new support if, if all I can do is I'm still getting 480, 480p uh, streaming video on Netflix because they still won't give me 4K on my phone. So AT and T says their 5G E, which is again as we. Hasten to point out is not 5G yeah, it's of like any crab kind. with a K. It's not <laughs> actual crab. Is really LTE. It uh, gets average speeds. They say of about 40 megabits. Although Open Signals measurements last year said that AT&T's average 4G speed was 15, not 40. But uh, even at 40, that's nowhere near the gigabit speeds 5G promises. Okay. And we're not going to get gigabit we're speeds in 5G see that. either. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I, my my. Um, Grumpy feelings about this being a marketing ploy by AT&T are tempered by the fact that 5G is also kind of a marketing ploy mm -hmm. and yeah, not entirely yes. real and not yes. something that most consumers Good will point. be affected by for a long time. Yeah. And so in the end, it's sort of like, you know, they all are trying to market stuff because they're trying to get churn in the industry and get people to believe that they've got the best network and planting seeds now that they can harvest later in a Super Bowl ad next year. And, right. you know, it's all the cellular industry, like at some point... There are no heroes here. <laughs> well, not, not, well, not look only at Verizon. That, Have you seen Verizon's? This really annoys me. The Verizon ads that were on the Super Bowl. We love first responders, and they had the Chargers coach and all the people who saved his life. And as if, oh, but you know that time when we cut off firefighters' uh, high speed access for in the three middle of the fire. months in the middle of the worst fire in California's history. That didn't really happen. That was a big misunderstanding. It was just a misunderstanding. Yeah. Uh, we never do it again, they said. But we love first Somebody responders. That just so when I see this and that, I just think these guys, just all of them, they're just all horrible people. <laughs> horrible people. Um, yeah, this is the USA Today's headline: Verizon Super Bowl ads honor California's firefighters after throttling their data speeds. Well, and I think that this is actually why. Uh, why T-Mobile has done so well, even though they're they're they network. They seem more honest, don't they? Well, it, it's just that they. They're really they're much more cost, customer centric. I mean, Earth. Verizon yeah. and AT and T have this. Uh, you know, they're they're the incumbents and they do all this crazy stuff. And, and T Mobile does its own version of a lot of Although, those things. John but, Ledger was n not loath to don a maroon T Mobile T shirts and book the Trump Hotel in Washington D C. the day after they asked for the merger with Sprint. No. They were not above doing that. I think what I like sitting in the lobby. 
We lo- T-Mobile. Well, see, what I like about him is that he's just open about it. He's, he's like, like, there's no, there's no artifice there. He is just a shameless. He does, he does huckster. live streams of slow cooking. Yeah, like, like he does, a, he does like parents go. That's of exactly slow the kind of thing you would do if you wanted people to think you were a real person. <laughs> you come down from your penthouse, you put on a T-shirt, yeah. mm-hmm. your long-haired wig, well, but, and you do slow cooking. But I, but I think that what's interesting is, is that he is. And I think he's an imperfect solution for this, but but I'm he, a T-Mobile customer, I should say. Yeah. Uh, I, I think that he is an example, though, of where corporations are going to start having to go, where their CEOs, their leaders have to be a lot more personable, have to be a lot lead more singers. connected. They're lead singers. Yeah, and, and they have to really be out there and actually, you know, they can't be completely separated. They can't or be disconnected. they hire a front man. But they have to find somebody that's going to be that people connect to the company and connect to it because the, right now what happens is with Twitter storms and everything else, it, you know you you got to get ahead of it and stay ahead of it and not not get ahead of it like when it happens, but you have to spend years building trust with yeah. pe- people. No, they're and, doing and it. that's going to come from authentic engagement. It's not going to come from you know another marketing campaign. Speaking of which, what is the T-Mobile Tuesday today? Is it tacos or socks? Tacos. It's tacos. <laughs> you know. This was a very disappointing Super Bowl. In the, in the it, not merely in the, the commercials were horrible, the worst game ever. But it, commercials were not. Uh, it, Microsoft's was nice. It was heart. T- it touched mm-hmm. your heart. No. Uh, where were the Clydesdales? There weren't. They any, were in there. They were, but they weren't great. They used a drone and some special effects. They to had a dragon fly around. That was my favorite ad. Was yeah. was the Game of Thrones ad that murdered that was the entire very annoying puzzling. Bud Light ad campaign. That, that was, was very puzzling. <laughs> Do you oh, imagine yeah, that, the upper hand there? We're like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to kill everybody in your ad campaign. Are you okay with that? And Bud Light's like, sure, great, dragon. Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> uh, was it an ad for Game of Thrones or yes. was it an ad for beer? It was an ad for Game of Thrones where the Bud Light people were like, you can use our stuff and we'll yes, we'll we'll collaborate oh, with you. But they were. It Apparently, wasn't a Bud Light HBO ad. was searching for a partner they could do an ad like that for, and Bud Light apparently was okay with them. And then said, "Well, can you just injure the Bud Knight and not kill him?" And they're like, "No, that's non negotiable. He's going to." I, went, I wonder if they went to Progressive and asked, "Like, can the can the dragon kill Flo?" And they'd be like, uh, "No, we need <laughs> yeah, her. That, we need I would her. have dug Move that." Along. Uh, oh, that's interesting. I see. I thought I was very confused, as I'm sure everybody at home was. Like, what is this a commercial? Think you're board? watching a Bud Light commercial. Mm-hmm. It's got the Bud Light Knight. Right. And by the way, we've all already seen a hundred Bud Light commercials Indeed, having to right. do with high yeah. fructose corn syrup for some reason, and then uh, and then uh, the Bud Light night, and he's jousting, and he gets knocked off his horse, and then a dragon comes and fries him <laughs> to a crisp, mm-hmm. yeah. and it says winter is coming or something. Game of Thrones, April fourteenth. Yeah. It's like what did I? I don't. I'm. I was very confused. Maybe oh, it's because I had a couple of Bud Lights before the ad. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I, I I like the one I like the teaser for the new CBS uh, Twilight Zone. Yes, where go go to color bars and then CBS Network has been knocked offline. That was good. Uh, there was, no, was it was good. it was cool. Not only was it appropriate, but later on there's there's uh, someone had like the the memo that was absolutely sent with top priority to every technician in the CBS network, saying warning at eight seconds into this commercial you're going to see color bars and, and a chyron that says that CBS is off the air. Do not do anything. This is part of the commercial. Do not switch back to your local broadcasting because nothing is going to freak out. <laughs> this this guy was probably just like watching his sports bets on, on monitor three <laughs> that's only holy crap there was a controversy i'm trying to remember what company it was where they did a couple of uh, uh seconds of dead air in the uk and it really up I maybe mean, it was a minute of dead air in the uk and it really upset people mm. yeah. because they thought but something and they went and banged on the tv <laughs> all sorts of stuff so <laughs> I, I when i saw this coming i saw oh they quickly they quickly showed yeah. that it wasn't really uh here's the here's the bud night uh he just got he just got knocked down this is kind of a surprise because we've been watching these commercials this whole time. Yeah, I thought this was a clever reference to Game of Thrones, and it turns yeah. out, no, it is actually Game of Thrones. Yeah, I thought, oh, there's the hound, right? Yeah, that's the mountain, I think. Oh, the mountain. He, he tears his head off, yeah. the Bud Knight, and then the dragon and, comes wait. and burns everybody to death. Your commercials are stupid. You've been hijacked. Your commercials been... What? And the Bud, the Bud Light King <laughs> had dies horribly. Yes. I thought that was hysterical. Yeah. I was especially for I was, people who hate that commercial. I was unclear. Yeah, <laughs> if, yeah. That's why All Flo would drink the yeah. imported beers and go. Really? What if you kind of get? You know, <laughs> she's lovely. I want the pear mead with the my nice mouth feel. I want that. Okay, yeah, never mind. We're from Northern California. Wait, yeah, that's, that's right. right. We're that's the people right. they're mocking. I know. Well, if they know people with good taste don't drink their beer already, so that why not market to them? Yeah, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> right? Like, let's we admit it, which right. is what they do. So great. Good for them. All right. Anything else to say about 12.2? <laughs> Believe it or not, that's the conversation we're having right now. <laughs> uh, before well, we there's only on. so sure. much you can say about, oh, good, no, no micro updates to, to Apple TV, a device which you're probably not using. Dude, we got 21 minutes out of it. I think, uh, I think we've True. done our, well done. our well job done. here today. So let's take a break. And there is still much to talk about. <laughs> I'm not stretching. I, got, I have so much material. We've got the first We're quarter be here results. All day. We could be. We got the quarterly results and mm -hmm. we got graphs. We've mm -hmm. got the FaceTime, you know, you know. scuttlebutt. Um, and we've got uh, Facebook, Apple's new glass panel MacBook keyboards. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's a good one. What a <sighs> bunch of winners. Win a win a chicken dinner. But first, a word from Zip Recruiter the best way to hire. And we know that right here because we use them. And it's always amazing when we go online with Zip Recruiter and place an ad how fast we get great responses. And now I understand why. Zip Recruiter's smart. You know what's not smart? A job board that will send you a, a hundred million resumes for candidates that just aren't qualified. Whoa. What a waste of time to have to go through all of those. You know what is smart? Going to ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak and hiring the right person. Of course, we've mentioned many times one post on Zip Recruiter goes to a hundred plus job boards and, and all the social networks. But it's more than that. Unlike other job sites, Zip Recruiter finds qualified candidates for you. That's why we immediately, within a few hours of posting, get really good candidates. It's powerful matching technology. Here's what they do. They go through thousands of resumes. They already have, actually, they're, they're being, when they say thousands, they're being um, humble. It's, it's millions of current resumes. They identify people with the right skills, education, and experience. We even got people local. Like we said, no, well, uh, we want them to be near here. And we got people from Petaluma. It's awesome. And then it goes to them and it says, you should, this is a great job you should apply to. So you're going to get qualified candidates fast, often, you know, within 24 hours. That's why ZipRecruiter is rated number one by employers in the U.S. That's, a, that's, that's from Trustpilot compared with other hiring sites. Over a thousand reviews. Number one. Right now, you could try ZipRecruiter for free. You got to go to ziprecruiter.com slash MacBreak. ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. And I'm not kidding. You, you will get responses so fast with, and not junk. You'll only get the best. And of course, the ZipRecruiter interface makes it very easy. You can have screening questions. You can, you can have a multiple choice or even essays and, and screen out people who just aren't right for the job without you even looking at them. They pre-format their resume so they all look you know, great and similar in the interface. They don't go to your inbox. They don't go to your phone number. They come right into that interface. You could screen them, rate them, and hire the right person fast. ZipRecruiter.com slash MacBreak. ZipRecruiter is the smartest way to hire. Apple said, we're sorry about the FaceTime bug, and I love this, and we're going to give the kid the bug bounty. <laughs> Good for them. Yeah. So the whole, you know this actually was this last week. It, it feels yeah. like this is. I think it broke on Tuesday. Yeah. So uh, at the time we were kind of puzzled about this report that a, a mom and a fourteen year old had discovered it a week earlier. We weren't sure. In fact, I, I think we mentioned we said something like, "Well, the Twitter account might be new. We don't know." It turns out, no, she's real. Grant Thompson and his mom uh, found it a week before the security researchers did, a week before 9 to 5, Mac proved it. Uh, his mother uh, tweeted Apple, and then I think later uh, went to Apple support. Apple support, about January 22nd, directed them to file a radar bug report and in order to do that. This is, by the way, I think we, we kind of, and everybody misreported that they said, no, you have to be a developer. No, they said, go fire a radar bug report, which is where bug reports get filed. It turns out, though, in order to do that, you have to register a developer account, which is not a huge... Do you have to pay? If it's the it used to be 99 one, bucks, right? Yeah. Okay, so... No, but that uh, can't, can't use the, the, the basic yeah. developer account for yeah, I, just getting... It's just a lot of free. things out. To, yeah, to, I just don't exactly. know if you're just an Apple ID, but yeah, it is... This is, yeah, the knee-jerk reaction of so many people at Apple is file a radar 
And yeah. this is like, well, that's this their is a system. security. The problem is this is a security hole, right? They yeah, should don't. not get tossed in radar. Anybody who's used radar, Apple's bug reporter knows that at least from the outside, it appears to be a black hole where bug reports, I thought you were going to say, Leo, where bug reports go to die <laughs> because that's kind of what happens with so many things filed to radar. And it I is hear this complaint though. We've had exactly the same complaint about Microsoft. Remember there was yeah. a, a, a terrible Windows bug that deleted data and app, Microsoft apparently knew about it for months. Or, well, it had been reported for months, but Microsoft paid yeah, no but attention. But like a zero-day security exploit that that lets serious. you listen in or see people uh, in yeah. their homes feels like a little bit of an escalation. Yeah. But I think, when, I think when, you have, when you have a confirmation that somebody at Apple actually saw this report that this per, this person tried to uh, file, it seems like the first thing you do is, gosh, I, I work at Apple. I have access to an iPhone. I should try it right here and then file your own bug report when you find out that, oh, dear, this is real. I just, it's uh, as of uh, when they, when uh, t I think it was, didn't, did Tim Cook directly post on Friday uh, to, I think it was Mac, uh, one of the Mac blogs uh, about, okay, it looks like we're not going to have our fix this week like we promised, but it's going to be here next week. And by, and by the way, since I got your ear, I do understand that we this should have been escalated much more quickly. Now we're going to be looking at our process for for receiving these bugs and and escalating it. Yeah, they, so they, did, they apologized. They, they did acknowledge that, yeah, yeah, we should not have, they, they told us we didn't do anything and that's a problem that we should fix. So the, the mom, Michelle Thompson, says that on Friday, an unnamed Apple executive flew out to see them in Tucson, and he may in fact get Apple's bug bounty, which could be something like twenty five thousand yeah. dollars. Yeah. yeah, no, it's good. I I think look, this is troubling because this was a huge issue and uh, with with a lot of fallout and seemed to just fall through the cracks. At the, at the same time, I do think, and you know, again, I'm trying to say this is a, a big thing. We don't understand. I think most of us the scale of one of these big companies in terms of yeah. what comes in over the transom, like. It's not like there's a person sitting at a desk with a telephone waiting for it to ring and and then suddenly a kid <laughs> from Tucson calls and like Apple finally yeah. somebody to talk to. Yeah, it's more worry. like just thousands Every of day. calls and it's Every mostly day. Garbage, right? right? It's like 99.9% .9 of it is not... I can't figure out how to turn off my Wi-Fi. Right, like 2% of it's bugs, well, and 0.01% and, and of it is actual legit security and issues. Right. And the challenge is how do you filter that out? And they failed. They totally failed here. And and, and it's too bad because... But, but it is a brutal test of one of these big companies well, and you use. have you have a lot of people out there answering those those phone calls and we can't expect every person that that picks up the phone to, to treat it like an executive would you know like you know that the, the, every person that's handling customer support when you call is going to treat it as if tim cook would treat it when someone called and said there's a problem i mean they're dealing with this is one of as, as jason said a whole bunch of calls now and they literally may not know it's uh, you know may not register how dangerous or right. bad this could be right and and and, and it is i have a feeling this was probably connected to to the um, group call. Yeah. So group I don't calling think it was around until 12 1 3 or whatever it was came out. October. Yeah. And, and enabled it. Yeah. Group calling is, uh, I have a lot of experience with group calling. Uh, <laughs> so group <laughs> He's call, the expert. Uh, group calling is is super, uh, super complex as yeah. far as how you manage. Uh, how you manage everybody hearing everybody else because it's all mixed minuses and it's all going back and forth and it's all dealing with um, multiple data rates. And and that, so FaceTime, when they say, oh, we got up to 32 people in FaceTime, that is an incredible feed. Yeah. And, and I know that um, there is an enormous amount of attention uh, that was spent on other group calling um, platforms to make sure that exactly what we saw there didn't happen. Do you and think that's that, all they talked about. That actually that. is a, a legit question. Do you think that that was a bug that should not have slipped through? It's a bug that you don't think about until you do it once. I mean, it, it, it quietly you, you happened. You would have known? Is that oh, what it, you're it, saying? It happened in other platforms. It's just that it, no one knew. Oh. No, it, it, this is, we had so issues where... For those who don't know, what happened is if you added yourself to the group call with... Like I call Alex, but I add myself, make it a group call. And then when the call comes in, I answer it on my second account. And it turns out that answers it on Alex's account, even though he yeah. has it picked up and I can hear and see what's going on in Alex's So, end. I mean, I, I think it's For, telling. Until he picks up or hangs it's up. It's telling that this is a feature that got delayed, which means it probably, because of QA problems, mm -hmm. because of quality issues. Ah. And so you've got to wonder, did it get fully tested? Because right. it got delayed, was there pressure to put it out there? I, I I don't want to undermine the complexity of these issues. At the same time, 
given what was required to duplicate this bug and knowing people who are software testers and QA engineers, yeah. like pushing the wrong button at the wrong time yeah. and adding yourself and all that, mm -hmm. this is this is like software Bingo. testing 101 oh, stuff. Really? So okay. I'm kind of shocked that this they bug should got have yeah, that's 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 what really surprised me. That was not something that oh, if you have this special, if you put this special file in a special directory, it activates X. Or if you happen to have had it plugged into Firewire instead of Lightning, no. Again, this is something like this is like the, the the monkey scripts that you usually put together, or at least I was aware of people putting together. That's just monkeys pushing random buttons automatically and then the app the, the script reports back if something happened that was not uh, not anticipated so that's that was very very surprising to me um, and also uh, like I, I think I mentioned this last week when we were quickly talking about it that this is this is why I think that you are inviting bad mojo on yourself when you buy a huge billboard saying that you this uh, the iPhone is the bastion of security and privacy which is again this was an this was an accident it, like like Alex said other platforms have had this problem but when you're going to really slam dunk that point so hard it really invites God to say, "Hey, wouldn't it be funny if we made this happen on all their phones?" And I guess it I would, was all everyone would talk about for an entire week. I guess I would say though that I, I appreciate the fact that they did that because it, it does raise the bar, and it means that they're going to have to play at a harder thing. And, and something like this looks particularly bad because of that. And I think right. that that's good because it means Apple's going to have to keep on moving down that path. I think they're they're secrecy and they acknowledged is, it, and they didn't they didn't try to deny it. They said yeah. this, is, this is a problem we should have solved, and we are moving to solve it. As opposed to, I, I can't believe that you. Think Think that this is a problem. I mean, this isn't a problem. Do you realize how few people were affected by this thing that you call a problem? It's so well, funny. You think it's a problem? And I think that I think that their secrecy is is part of the problem too. Because what happened is is that you know for for other platforms that, that are group calling, uh, we would file two or three pretty rough bugs a week, and we would literally say if you do it this way, this way, this way, this way, this way, this is what's going to come out. And it's because we were doing all these uncontrolled events. The, the guys that are testing it, you know, they get into a zone of, oh, you click this and click this and click this. And then what we were doing was clicking a different order than they were. And when they're testing it, they get into this pattern of this is how they do it. And until it goes out into the public, you don't you don't think of another pattern. Like you don't even think another pattern would be possible, you know, yeah. when when you I'm do gonna, it. Until I'm going to be that. in the rare position of defending Apple here. <laughs> I'm usually <laughs> on the other side. But they, bugs are bugs happen. Yep. Bugs slip through. Bugs are hard to get. Apple mm -hmm. did respond you know, and I also understand why Grant Thompson and Michelle Thompson's report was missed. I think once it became public, uh, in a way that Apple had to pay attention to, they responded very quickly. Yeah. I think and shutting shutting down group FaceTime was, was a big move, right? Because you're breaking a feature for a lot of people. Big deal. And it was and they absolutely did it. the right thing Without to do. Without hesitation. And they did it. Yeah. Um, Grant, by the way, says he 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 also feels the same way. He was on uh, CNBC's Squawk Box. He said he'll still use Apple products. Every now and then, something like this just falls through the cracks and can be found. He says, I believe Apple's still trying to protect user privacy. I love it that his mom said uh, if he did get some bug bounty money for what he found, we'd certainly put it to good use for his college because I think he's going to go far, hopefully. This is actually a field he was interested in before and even more so now. He gets 25 grand. I think you've guaranteed this guy's going to be a, a security researcher when he, yeah. when he gets well, out of school. For twenty five thousand dollars, he's not going to go very far in college. That's what that's, uh, for one semester, oh boy. unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It depends yeah. what school. But. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. No, I think that they, that Apple handled this uh, as well as they could given everything. I, yep. I wish they had. I wish the way the story had gone is that they had found out and shut down group FaceTime and really and everybody's like, oh, group FaceTime is down. What's going on? And then they right. would say, well, we found a bug and we're fixing it. And in the meantime, it's going to be down well, for a week. And every company wishes that. That's responsible sure. disclosure. Sure. And it just didn't work out this time. Yeah. What I really want is for Apple to, uh, and I'm sure they're doing this, to look at every point of failure in this because that's the thing that right. they need to get better is like, sure how did we yeah. fail to get this, what process was missing to get this report at all of these different points flagged as potentially enormous? Like, you know, what did we not have enough QA resources to duplicate this? Um, did we shunt it into the wrong bin in our in our support or our or our bug reporter? Right, like that to me, 
um, it's the learning experience here, right? Like, because this is going to happen again. Something's going to come in off, it probably comes in on the transom every, you know, few months, every few weeks. They need, and they failed here. They completely right. failed. So how do they learn from that and change their processes to be better? They're not going to be perfect, but they could at least make them better than they were this time. Yep. New York Attorney General Letitia James and Governor Andrew Cuomo have announced their intent to investigate. <laughs> uh, yeah, you know, investigation Harum, doesn't Harum, mean Harum, Harum. prosecution. Po I mean, these are politicians. This is publicity. Yeah. That That is the most traditional and transparent being a publicity hound yeah. that yeah. you could possibly do. I, I'm amazed that it's the governor and the attorney general. Usually it's the attorney Just generals the who use this yeah. they're trying as to be a governor. political, because they want to be governor. <laughs> right. And Andrew yeah. Cuomo has forgotten he's already governor. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, the, the, lawsuit, the lawsuit from the Texas, from the lawyer in Texas is a little more interesting because he's claiming that because of this because of this bug a private deposition was not could have been but was eavesdropped oh, upon which makes me think that how did you know that someone was eavesdropping on this so uh, so if unless this is a lawyer trying to make more money from suing apple than he could have with the thing he was taking deposition on i'd like to see exactly what the what he's actually saying happened well that's why i wasn't too perturbed about it because you can't just listen indefinitely, right? I mean, uh, mighty long time. Really? Yeah. And, so if know, the person's until, phone until, is until off and he doesn't terminated. hear notifications, he won't know that he's in a FaceTime call until later. I mean, he, he'd wouldn't have, you he'd see have, that you were in a FaceTime call? Uh, I, gee, I, don't I got know. the impression that at best you might get twenty seconds because the face. Oh, maybe not though. If you okay, if so you'd, you'd, up, to, you'd have to. now in the call. Yeah, I guess the call has yeah, to be well, terminated. I mean, I yeah. think the the answer there is going to be that they'll do some discovery and find out if that actually happened. And if it did, yeah. I imagine Apple will probably have to pay yeah, that's them a big damages. One. That's but a bad one. but I, you know, the funny thing. Well, it's not funny. I say that um, uh -huh. is that so many of these bugs that are publicly disclosed are known, right? They're yeah. known but not publicly, and. The question is not, I mean, maybe there's something involving a deposition or something like that. But I think also the question is, are there state agents that were using this to right. spy on people? Because, you know, oftentimes it's known and all the spy agencies are using these kinds of approaches and then they don't, you know, yeah, they don't want the anyone point. to it's know. It's not known by Apple. It's known by three-letter agencies who are damned if they're going to tell anybody exactly about so that's yeah. scary where it's you're listening easy. to that's, a, a political that, yeah. dissident or you know whoever and you're spying on them against their knowledge I guess, that's you know scary. we're all sitting here with iphones that could be in a facetime call right now we wouldn't know right? you know this is what this is what or, or i get Max, when people say way, i'm never going to have a Max, right? i'm never going to have an I'm never going to have a, a you know any of these assistants in my house you, i don't want a microphone <laughs> in my bedroom or something it's like every device you own is a microphone and a camera right. like every single one and that's just be aware of it. Yeah. If you want security, oh, uh, this is you, there, if you want security, you leave all the electronics at the door. You well, know, yeah, it's, so it's, it's it's also why you imagine with everything you imagine. What is the worst case? Not even likely, but even out outlying scenario. How bad is it, and how bad would it be to my life if I suddenly found out that I was exploited that uh, uh, my technology was ex exploited that way? And that is why I have a little tab of gaffer's tape blocking every single camera uh, that's on my laptop and everything else because this thing is like right right next to my bed and it's like in my living room and it, it moves around with me and normally it's there to prevent me from uh, uh, showing up uh, in, a, in a in a group meeting unshaven and in a t-shirt that I slept in because I didn't know this was going to be a video conference call. That's, that happens but to also, me more than any of the other stuff. Yeah. <laughs> That's but the also, real danger. <laughs> but but also because of because of situations like this, there is no way you can get around a piece of piece of gaffer tape actually physically blocking the lens. Uh, and I think that well, I think that you're, you're you might see a, an actual advertisable feature on laptops and other devices that no, there is an actual slide that oh, covers no, you the do. camera that you can turn on. There's quite a few. Here, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And, it, and here's a here's a physical switch that electronically isolates the microphone even circuitry the, from everything even else. Even Facebook's portal shipped with a crappy piece of plastic you could put over. Yeah, the I mean, mm -hmm. even if you go all the way back to eyesight, the eyesight you just turn the little yeah. bezel and it yeah. closed. That was the, I remember and, that. And, yeah. and not only and not only that, yeah. but there was a there would be a actual white dot like the the, the iris yeah, was actually was white. Closed, yeah. so you could actually see. Okay, I can I can actually change into my dinner clothes because I can see that I, I can see physically that there is no camera pointed at me that can actually. Show off my this is a little bit of a narcissistic point of view, though, that somebody might want to see you changing your clothes. 
Nobody, no, I don't, no one wants no, to see that's, Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Why would anybody want to know? There, there, I mean, there, there are actual search engines for look for, for searching. Yeah. No, there, there are actual webcams. search engines that will find yeah. you open, exactly, open webcams. Yep. I'd, so I'd be flattered, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh, God, don't, don't, put, don't, don't put that in the show that gets broadcast everywhere. That's, that's, that's I, like, I just want everybody to know, I like do the, not put tape over any uh, of the cameras. They're all wide open, so. We're, we're going to see if we get some press out of this one. <laughs> <laughs> what was that CEO with the with like the the the, the private information locking? So hey, I put my actual C oh, yeah, my life social security number yeah. on a billboard. Yeah. I dare you to try to go oh, down. Oh, it didn't go well. It didn't, it didn't go well. Go well. Uh, what a surprise! Hackers actually uh, are pretty pretty skilled. Um, Apple spanked Facebook and Google this week. Uh, it turns mm. out both Facebook and Google were using enterprise certificates, which a lot of companies use, by the way, uh, to to internal applications on iPhones and Android devices. Uh, those certificates allow uh, people to bypass the Apple Store. Facebook was and Google were both using it to get uh, apps that bro essentially broke Apple's privacy policies by, sp by spying on the uh, users of the app. Now, it was, of course, they were billed that way. And, in fact, users were paid for using the app. And the, the at least with Facebook, the intent was pretty clear. It was aimed at 13 to 35-year-olds. It's market they research. Wanted, they want to watch everything they want to you know, do. They want to know well, what kids are doing so they can here's, buy that company. Here's, here's, here's the issue. There's a is big that, difference between how each of them did it. Well, and, the, the, and Facebook actually was nasty because they had an app, almost identical app, called Lonavo. Yeah. Which, in the App Store. In the App Store. And they Apple claimed, yanked and claimed said... Claimed to be a VPN uh, privacy right. solution that was actually... <laughs> yep. In addition to being a VPN, it was a VPN through Facebook where Facebook got to look at all the data. Right. Yep. And Apple Yay. spanked him at that time and pulled it off the App Store. Yeah. And Facebook said, oh, we'll never do that again. Then it turns out that this new Facebook app <laughs> was basically the same code. Yes. Yes. rebranded <laughs> and so that's why i think apple took this a little bit farther well, and the enterprise well, certificate the thing you need to know about it is that the, it is as you said the goal is you use it for your internal right. em, your employees and what both of these companies did and the google and facebook stories are indeed different but both of them were using it as a method to distribute apps to people who are outside their facebook company. still distributes its and app in the uh, google store by and the that's way. and right it's still there sure so that was in violation of Apple's terms, which right. is, you know, the only way you get to bypass the App Store is if you agree it's only for your employees, right. and they didn't do that. And it, and, and in it, addition, they were using this to get around an App Store rejection, and that was when Apple uh, turned off the certificate. Which had a big impact. Uh, nobody at Facebook knew it was for lunch. and uh, They couldn't call their bus. They couldn't. The Google people yeah. couldn't get the bus. Uh, so there were apps that stopped working. In both cases, Apple restored access well, a day or two later. But it, message, I mean, it's a shot across the bow. Message is very clear. Don't mess with this. Yeah, because because I, I think that the conversation that, that happened after this is, this is your enterprise apps. What happens if we turn off the other ones? Uh -huh. You know, like, 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 let's be clear, like, don't do the, you know. And, and I think that the problem is, is number one, is that by giving them all that data is that all their friends, all the, you know, it's not just their data. When you touch somebody and you give away all the communication that they're having, you're giving away the communication that they're having with their friends. And their friends did well, not agree to yeah. that. And, and I do is, want to point out, though, this happens every single time you say, yes, download my contacts list. Yes. <laughs> we were just talking about this uh, on iOS today, the TikTok. First thing, you can't really even add people on TikTok until you give them your contacts, at which point you are I giving up your friends. And and I yeah. I go in and if I if I'm going to use a Facebook um, login which I don't use anymore, uh, but but I would always go in and turn it off. And if it wouldn't let me go in because I was turning off friends, I was just like ah, I'm yeah, not going to play anymore. I don't, yeah. wanna, I don't want to play. Well, also the, the I mean the other thing is that we're uh, most people are thinking mostly about how okay, well the Facebook is using this to scrape more information about individuals for advertising pro, uh, profiles. But we forget that it was it's not just that, but for, in Facebook's case, it's the ability to see all the other apps on the user's phone and how much t time they're spending on each one of them. Uh, when the 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 previous iteration of this app is one of the reasons why Facebook decided to buy WhatsApp because they were able to see through this app exactly. that my God, people are using this this thing called WhatsApp that exactly. we've never heard of. In Instead of the Facebook Messenger, this is good. We should we should buy out this company while we still can. Uh, right. And they're also doing. It's they're not also an doing accident. That five percent like of the users of this bad app, not Onava, but the subsequent uh, bad app, were our teenagers.
Now Facebook, yeah, says, but we got their parents' permission. Yeah, sure. Yeah, but they, which they which they which they have to do. You can't even do a study as a right. research group to do a study unless you have a signed document from parents saying I, you have my permission to to get f access to this information for my fourteen year old. And so Facebook, this is this is like, kind of like what I was mentioning earlier. But at least Apple, when they screwed up, they said we screwed up. Here's how we screwed up. We're going to try not to screw up, and we're going to try to fix these things. Facebook's like, oh, but no, nobody used nobody under the age of eighteen unless they had a signed document document from there and number one they were actually being advertised without being told to without being told this was a facebook research app number one direct i mean directly well, wait a minute. the name of the app was old. facebook research app so but no because you can have a third party saying here we want to do research on facebook that, that was another defense oh, this is that facebook another, tried to make. another case they were, they were else they also well then yeah and why how come you didn't know this was related to facebook until you actually tried to sign up for this thing uh but the the other thing is that so oh yeah we we had we had signed uh, things from everybody but of course as if they don't think they don't know that uh, everyone who's writing about this story is then going to try to sign up for this and well guess what i'm 14 years old click a checkbox Great, you're in. <laughs> yeah, do I have, do I have my well, parents' permission? Absolutely. Click checkbox and you're in. I don't know if that is the case. So go ahead that, and try well, that. That, that, that. I don't was, want well, to was, impugn them improperly. Uh, key was, facts I, about this market research program are being ignored, according to Facebook. Despite early mm -hmm. reports, there was nothing secret about this. It was literally called the Facebook Research app. <laughs> now they say also it wasn't spying. All the people who signed up to participate went through a clear onboard process asking for their permission and were paid to participate. $20 a month in gift cards. Finally, less than 5% of the people who chose to participate were teens, all of them with signed, I don't know what that means, parental consult. How'd form. you like to have the job of writing the apology slash explanation blog posts? At I think Facebook. it's a whole department. It's a growth industry at Facebook. <laughs> I think it's a growing department. I think, um, so when this story broke, I heard from a lot of people who were very cynical about what Apple's response would be. And they, they said, because they're, and I know a lot well, of, here's my question. I don't know a lot of App Store developers. Could Apple have spanked them a little less hard or did yeah, they have i think apple i don't know the details my guess is they probably could have just shut down this one right. app and they did a little bit more and i think apple is trying to to put a little daylight between bad actors within facebook and the rest of the facebook employees and we've seen this where employees of some of these companies google included but especially facebook have morale is down a little bit because of things that their company has done it's certainly the, the case with facebook and what, how do you hit them where they live? Well, when you're a Facebook employee and some jerk in some group that is that is doing market research or spying or whatever you want to call it and got kicked out of the app store and decided to use the enterprise certificate, they have caused you to not get your lunch or yeah. miss your bus yeah. or Wake uh, up. the app that you're testing stopped working for a couple of days. Wouldn't you be frustrated at the bad actors within your company? And I think that's part of what Apple's doing here is trying to like get some people at Facebook to be uh, mad well, about, because I think fa Facebook obviously has this very, very laissez-faire attitude of like, well, you know, enterprise certificate, use it for whatever, instead of saying, you guys can't screw up our enterprise certificate with your market research. And somebody didn't tell them that, no, that and now everybody knows it. was used for internal taste testing of the Facebook app and yeah, Instagram app. and it all broke. And all of that so stuff for two days. So if I'm a developer of one of those I'd apps, I would be mad at those people within Facebook and the people who Excellent enabled point. them. Because we have to yeah. remember again uh, that these companies are sprawling. You know, there's uh, most. They're not a monolith. It's not. It's not like they, that. Mark decided that he wanted to have this right. app activated. In you know, it was some group that that did that. It probably didn't even get up that high. It was someone who just worked. You know, they're they're trying oh, to get something I'm done. I'm guessing this got up that high. Oh, got that up when it when, I bet, when it happened. I bet that Mark said we really need to figure out what the kids are using and that we need to make an initiative to do this. That sounds like something. Maybe that I that's got to be from the top. Maybe. Never the, the it doesn't market, matter. The Never market research is not it's not a stupid thing to do, no. although it's a Weasley way to do it with uh the VPN and I saying even think that it's, it's that Weasley. Onava was Weasley because it yeah. didn't say it's a Facebook yeah. research app. But this isn't Weasley, this is very upfront. Yeah. We want to know what you're up to. If you want twenty bucks a month, just it's sign just up. that on iOS they couldn't do it without violating Apple's terms and they decided the it, they decided they didn't care. And and when and that's when, a big point. And when they asked the kids about it. You know, there's there was an interview I think on NPR where they were asking all these kids, and the kids were like, "Well, they're looking at all of our data anyway." Like they they were like, "We figured we <laughs> yeah. just get 20, 20 bucks of, of gift certificates." The kids, it wasn't like the kids felt like they were wronged. They were just kind of like, "Man, eh, we, you know, the people are looking at everything we do all the time. It doesn't it was really matter. Apple we just that get was extra. wronged here." But Apple's doing, I think, the right thing in sending a signal to both Google and Facebook. You've got to adhere to our privacy policy. Right. And the fact that both these apps are still in the App Store on, on, on Android is very telling. 
And I think this privacy, I mean, obviously this privacy war is, is going to continue both from the government trying to get in, Apple trying to, you know, close it up. These guys trying to, people trying to maintain control over data or keep that data going because there's just, you know, the whole internet runs on our data. So there's a lot, there's a lot of app developers who assumed that Apple wouldn't do anything here because um, they feel very much like small developers get the letter of the law. Uh, co- well, you know, it used mm, to kick them out of the store for right. stupid reasons, and then they have to appeal. And that big developers do all sorts of things. In a that way, are not that's allowed, the case. If right? this had been an individual developer, oh, they would Marco have been Marco Armand had done this. It'd be bye bye, kid. The entire all the apps would disappear from the app store. Yeah, I think so. But I disagreed when my friends were like, "Oh, they're not going to do anything." Because first off, politically, like, when will there be a better time? Right. To be seen as being yes. in opposition to Facebook, yes. when would there be right. a better time? This is Facebook is is on the outs here. This is going to make you look good to do this, and yeah, it can be a slap on the wrist, which is what it is. Uh, and Facebook's going to have to take their lumps. They're really good at it. They've been taking their lumps the last <laughs> two years. It just turns out uh, moving fast and breaking things eventually catches up. You know, I think that's the that's mm-hmm. the hard part that Facebook has to you know work through. Is that uh, you know? I'm just going to download ways, the Apple. Facebook app on my <laughs> Pixel because I thought twenty bucks a month. That's, <laughs> that's yeah, yeah, sure. exactly. Well, in some ways, I, I mean, I, I think the 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 hard part is is that in some sometimes you feel like Apple moves so slowly to be careful that it's like you know it's it's, it's this monolithic you know process. Yeah, but as a but customer, at the same time, who would you rather be with? Well, yeah, exactly. It's, it's just stability, you know, versus you know uh, sometimes versus innovation. Well, yeah, right. we're not going to get five G on an iPhone until after many Android phones have it, presumably, right? Right. Well, and 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 even like when we get back to the group calling, Apple, you know, is is going to eventually release group calling for all yeah. of us to use. But it's not something Google's been doing that for a long time, you know. And and but there was you know there was a lot of lumps in 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 the, there's a lot of arrows in the back uh, of the of the you know out in the front there. Uh, okay, let's talk about glass panel keyboards. Then we'll take a break and we'll talk about quarterly results. And Jason will oh illustrate boy. in color. <laughs> oh boy! Oh boy! In color. Uh, this is a report from uh, Mac Rumors. Apple's exploring a new keyboard design to. Rep- I hope they are. It's patents. This is patents, though, right? Uh, so yeah, what's patents the, what's tell the you reality nothing. of it? Yeah. They, last year we saw a, pat- a patent where Apple said, "What if the Touch Bar was the entire keyboard?" And this right. patent is, okay, kind what if the idea. touch bar was not the entire keyboard, but what if we still made it like a gas, glass panel? Um, my podcast co-host, Mike Hurley, made the joke yesterday. It's like, oh, you don't like dust in your keyboards, huh? What <laughs> we'll if there was it. no keyboard? <laughs> it's the, it's the uh, <laughs> what is it? It's the conduction the stovetop of keyboards, yeah, right? It's all yeah, so the up. idea here is that it's got, it's got, it's a glass panel, but it's you can you can feel the keys, and they might actually it's move a little bit. The, molded in the shape of a keyboard, yeah. That's, yeah, it's I, and I, Andy and I, I'm waiting for yeah. the, the picture of Andy's face horrified. Well, like horrified. you can plot so, Apple's history with keyboards, right? Like, and this is the scary part: is the question, all the controversy about the MacBook keyboard. The question is, did Apple look at that and say, "Oh, we went too far," or did Apple say, "Aha"? We did not go far enough. Or did they decide yeah. a long time ago that they were going to this place and they just kept on making the keys thinner and thinner and thinner to train us on? It could be, right? So that that's for me, that's the question because I have no doubt there are people in Apple who are like, how can we reinvent the keyboard and eliminate right. travel and make it this completely now, new thing? I have to admit, I'm fooled by my trackpad every time. It's not moving. It feels like it's moving because sure. of, the, of the haptic engine. Could you do that with keys? Possibly. I might feel, I know Andy and I won't be happy, but... And I won't be happy either. Oh, and you a lot like of, a real a lot of people, clicky I, keyboard? Oh, yeah, I like yeah. a real clicky keyboard. I, I, my, yeah, my home keyboard is the th- as much movement so, as possible. And yeah. I do think that the lack of reliability in the MacBook keyboard, where a lot of people complain about <laughs> dust getting issue. it and all that, is competing with the lack of travel that is traditional in keyboards. And the question also is, does Apple not care about the one but cares a lot about the other? It's my because sense. Maybe my, I'm wrong yeah. and I don't talk to enough people, but that most people, surprisingly, like my wife, don't, mind the lack of travel but yeah. everybody who has a stuck key is going to mind that right well and i think uh, that I may be the truth is that we may complain about the lack of travel we're you're um, all writers you're all banging exactly away we it's our it's our uh it's our instrument also of choice. also also defined as people who use keyboards <laughs> <laughs> well i don't yeah. like it i don't like it. In fact, i don't th- I, I don't I, I don't think that i have never as, I, wouldn't, I shouldn't say never but i have very very rarely talked to somebody who said that uh, uh, who said that 
I just I just switched to the new MacBook, and boy, that new keyboard is much better than the old one. If if you give me the opportunity to buy a MacBook that had the old keyboard in it, I would say no because I love this new one so much. It's always it's better than I thought it would be. Eh, I guess I can live with it. Or the, the stuff that I'm getting with the new my new 20, uh, 2018 MacBook Pro is worth giving up a more comfortable keyboard. Really, uh, and Jason makes a, of course the the critical point that this is just a patent. But I'm I'm amazed that they're even continuing to go down this path. This is definitely the wily e. coyote of human interface engineering. That if you just keep failing and failing and failing, <laughs> just fix all the things that you keep failing at until this is one big. 10 layer burrito of fail or <laughs> you could just simply say now let's see what the the problem here let's go on the whiteboard <laughs> is that we want a keyboard that feels natural <laughs> doesn't get broken <laughs> has a has resistance against dust <laughs> it looks like we're actually <laughs> looking at the keyboard we had the, uh, the first time four years ago yeah. but yeah, like, I, uh, I, I, I like I don't think, I, it's i mean it's uh, I, honestly the, the current keyboard is is a pile of garbage as far as, far as i'm concerned <laughs> it doesn't it, it doesn't add any features that affect consumers it's all for apple and so but I'm sitting next to two guys choices using iPad Pros with Apple's keyboard, which yeah. is not the greatest. I would pr I prefer this to oh, the MacBook keyboard by too. far. It, what? Um, wow. But the uh, I wow. like the idea that Apple and other tech companies say, you know, let's not just accept that the current whatever is good enough. Let's yeah. look, what well, could we reinvent this? Could we make yeah. a better mou mousetrap here? Um, and Apple clearly is trying that with the keyboard. Well, and, and the problem is. Do they start believing their own PR and they're like, no, no, we've really reinvented the keyboard. And I think it's exacerbated by the fact that on a PC laptop, if you don't like the keyboard on one company's laptops, you can buy a different company's laptops. On MacBooks, there's only one manufacturer and there's only one keyboard now. There's only one keyboard, which means it really has to have broad appeal. And I, I do hear, I Andy, I do know people who like this keyboard, or at least profess to like it, but I also know a lot of people who hate it. And polarizing is not what you want in the only keyboard that is purch purchasable yeah. for a, an entire laptop well, line. And that's where I Apple just think is. It's, I, I just think it's incredible. You can't even buy an external keyboard made by Apple that doesn't have this cockamamie, super flat design. And it's like that's where that's where every joke that we've had to suffer since day one as Mac users about you know Apple Apple they're they're all about style over substance we said no it's not the macintosh it looks stylish but it's also a very powerful computer when it comes down to again an external keyboard that can be as big as anybody wants it you don't have to put these these crappy flat keys on it but apple decided to put these same flat crappy flat keys on it that's style over substance that's everything that we've been making fun of for 10 years yeah well and, and i i do think as a creative professional uh, th th what those keys mean to us changes every app that we jump into and i can see that as a you know i would be interested in something not as my what i write in but as a uh as if i'm jumping from editing to 3d to to something else I, having those keys actually change their display um rather than you know a lot of us have had those little rubber things that you put over top of your keyboard that is like now your final cut keyboard sure. or cinema 4d keyboard or your illustrator keyboard but imagine them all changing, that entire interface changing every single time. And if you got rid of the ridges of the keys, I could see an argument of, well, I could just change the whole interface. Like I'm touching things. You know, I have like, I have little virtual dials or I have, you know, something like that all that all kind of become part of that. I know that um, one of the things that we've built is stuff that integrates with two different touch screens. So you're one screen controlling the other screen and you're able to design that interface in a, with a lot more freedom. I, I'm not saying that that's what I want for my day-to-day -day laptop, but I can mm -hmm. see how a conversation around that could generate yeah. this idea of moving to a glass top. See, that, that's that's the difference that I'm talking about. If you decided to, Intel's been trying to get manufacturers interested in that kind of a thing where you have two glass, pan, yeah. a notebook that's two glass panels, one of which can be a keyboard when it needs to be, the other, or could be just another another touch surface if you need it to be. At least you're saying that, yes, you're, we're, we're taking away from you this beautiful natural field mechanical keyboard, but we're also saying that when you're gaming, you can actually have a game controller there, or you can have a jog shuttle, or you can actually, when you want to read a comic book, 
book. You can have two pages of a book in front of you when you open it this way. This, what I always get kind of, what I think is a hard and fast rule is that if you take something away from me as a, as a, uh, as a hardware manufacturer, you have to give me something back in its place. Uh, and if you're telling if the answer to the question, why did you make this change is that because we think stylishly it looks better or because uh, that allows us to save a manufacturing step and you're not making it cheaper for me to buy uh, to, uh, in return. That is not that that's, uh, that don't don't make me solve an Apple problem. That sounds like an Apple problem. You solve it <laughs> and you give me a real keyboard. You don't make me have to suffer because you don't want to make your 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 baseboard uh, two millimeters thicker or <laughs> you don't want to figure out a way to put a, a really good uh, keyboard in the same space. And to and to to what uh, to what Jason said, again, uh, I have to I had a had a little bit of a scare uh, a couple months ago where there was a possibility that my MacBook Pro, my 2015, was broken. I thought I knew it was just a SIM mod, a, 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 a storage module that could just swap in and be, it'd be good. But if it didn't, if that didn't fix the problem, I was going to be screwed because there's no way I could buy a new MacBook. Whereas, and I knew exactly which model of Windows 10 notebook I would probably have to swap it with uh, in addition to buying a new couple of Mac minis uh, around the house to uh, replace the function of the, of the MacBook Pro. Be uh, because uh, in instead of one machine that can do it all for me, which would be the MacBook Pro, the fact that this is a terrible keyboard that I don't like meant that I could switch over to a Lenovo uh, Carbon uh, X1, which has a magnificent keyboard that Apple hasn't been as good as for more than five years. Uh, I, I don't think these are choices that Apple would be making if they were actually competing for consumers. When they know that the, the if you have, they, it's not, uh, are we making a keyboard as good as the one we're replacing? Uh, it's, a, it's a question of, I know it's not as nice as the one that we're replacing, but is it so bad that someone's going to switch from Mac well, to Windows? Not, but I think it's more than just switching. It's also, I mean, the same problem they're having with the phone is just upgrades, you know? And so, the, you know, how fast we upgrade. Like I haven't, I'm still hanging on to my 2015 because I'm really, I really want my mag safe. <laughs> you know, like, and it's not, <laughs> and, and inserting something into the, into the USB-C is not enough. I travel a lot and I, and I, and I use that. The mag safe was, is the thing. All the other stuff doesn't matter to me, but the mag safe was like where the, the line was and I haven't upgraded yet. And, 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 and I think that, but that costs them money when I don't, you know, uh, when I have, you know, I have. 40 laptops, you know, in, within the company, you know, it's not, it's not like a, you know, us deciding we're not upgrading is, is not a trivial, you know, number when it comes to that, you know, and, and, you know, because we just don't want to, we don't want to give that up. I still use the keyboard you recommended, Andy, years ago, DOS keyboard. That's what I have. On my, yep. uh, on my uh, iMac Pro. And on my other Macs, I'm using these code keyboards from uh, WASD, which I really like and now I know yeah. they've, they've added some uh, colored key combinations, which I'm now I'm thinking. I'm I'm envious of of Jason's uh, little mini keyboard and his color combination. Is that a code? It's, what is that? I like the clicky. This is a Leopold, but it's a clicky keyboard. Clicky. Yeah. It's it's, yeah, it's for later. probably cherry switches. We'll talk <laughs> yeah, about it yeah, later. It's, He's it's got a cherry pick. brown. He, uh, we even can co talk about the cherry colors. Yeah. But it's you funny that the, this it. iPad keyboard is you using the butterfly s butterfly switches. Why but do you like it more? It is. It, it has a different feel. Is it more travel? Um, or? It is. I think it's not. I but it, it doesn't really have it. I built a twenty page twenty page document on, yeah. in Pages with this. I mean, this I don't, guy I don't you know love it, to but me it's it is, fine. It doesn't have the dead stop that the yep. laptop keeboards have. It's got a little more give little, when you little spring to yeah. it. Yeah, I mean Although everybody's my different. My MacBook Air, the new Mac, twenty eighteen MacBook Air, is to me just enough above acceptable yeah, that I can use. It. I think their third the take third at generation. this keyboard is yeah. definitely better than the first yeah. two. I again, I keep coming back to the fact that Apple's the solo vendor in its right. market, and as a result, you need to make a keyboard that's not polarizing. Yeah. It's got to be crowd pleasing. Yeah. Everybody's got to find it okay. And what they did is they made a keyboard that I think a third of the people like, a third of the people don't care, and a third of the people hate. And that's a problem because a third of your market can't buy a laptop keyboard well, that and they like. And most likely that third of the market is, are the power users yeah, that, exactly. that are really connected to you so, more than anyone else. Because we all have opinions about keyboards, right? That's why they make a billion different keyboards. The problem right. is Apple is the single vendor and uh, they got you got to get the MacBook keyboard right. Well, and, and it has to be right for as many people as possible, acceptable for as many piece, but, people as possible. But then I want, and, I, and sometimes I wonder how important it is to them because I know that my, my behavior at this point is uh, that I... I go home and I work on my iMac and I then I take my my um uh I take my my iPad Pro around and 
I open up my laptop when there's just something weird that I can't quite connect. I haven't figured out how to connect to my iPad, but that's about it. I mean, it's just like, oh, compatibility with some file or I have to open up, you know, do this thing or I have to do a quick edit with Final, Final Cut. But, but I, you know, I think that, you know, I, and I don't know whether Apple looks at that as a trend or not, but I, you know, to me, there's my work at home and then there's my iPad for literally 95% of my time that I'm outside of my house. I did, somebody's reminding me, I bought uh, an ancient, uh, antique IBM Model M keyboard. And I haven't <laughs> used it on anything yet. I have it. It's very loud. <laughs> yeah. It really feels good, but I just haven't found the right uh, place to use it. The only sensitivity I have with my clickety clack is when I'm on conference calls. Oh, you can't notes. use it, and I can't so use I, them on the air. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, because yeah. it's too, it sounds like I'm like booking airline <laughs> reservations in between <laughs> Absolutely. calls or something. Yeah. All right, let's take a little break. Six colors coming up, and we'll show you the one thing that uh, Jason Snell could not do on his iPad. Well, that's an esoteric one, but sure. Yeah, I like it. <laughs> it's actually the main reason I use BB Edit. All right. It's the main reason. Our show today brought to you by Atlassian. I'll tell you the reason we use Atlassian. We are an Atlassian house. We love Atlassian here at Twit, and we use it because it's a collaboration, a, a set of collaboration tools that help our team work together, but also stay connected to us and other members of the team, document what they do. It all starts, uh, and everybody who's ever developed knows, if you're an Agile developer, you certainly know Atlassian's Jira, J-I-R-A. That's probably how you know Atlassian, but do you know they have many other tools, not just for developers, Atlassian offers an affordable, reliable set of tools for teams of all sizes in many areas of the enterprise, from DevOps to Agile, from IT apps to Ops to ITSM and whatever's next. For instance, we use Jira uh, kind of to keep track of issues and, and, and their resolution and who's responsible for it and all that. It's very good for that. We use Confluence, though, with Jira to document changes, document workflow. That's really important. Jira Ops, this is something relatively new. Ops Genie and Status Page that helps you detect incidents, coordinate response efforts to resolve issues faster, to keep customers or stakeholders updated. If you've got a code base, you sure know about Bitbucket. And if you don't, you better you better go find out about it. Atlassian forms the backbone of effective cross-team project planning, organization, and a communication. And your teams love using it. They can choose the tools that's right for their current framework while trusting that as you grow, Atlassian will grow with you. And of course, it all integrates with Jira and Confluence. So that way, you, you know, you don't have to move from platform to platform. Look at the companies, the best IT teams in the world that use Atlassian. We love Atlassian. You will love Atlassian. And the nice thing is you can try Atlassian because all of their apps are easy and free to try at Atlassian.com slash IT. Atlassian.com slash IT to find the tools that are right for your team. Atlassian.com slash IT. This made my heart just go pit a pat when I saw this on <laughs> sixcolors.com. BB edits, very oh, yeah. fancy grep. Let's talk about regular expressions. <laughs> people love that. No, oh. this is so I put together the, the Six Colors report card where I talked to 55 different people about how Apple did in 2018. And I had this moment where I realized I had to go back to my Mac to finish it, even though I was working on my iPad, because I do a lot of work on my what iPad. What was it that the iPad couldn't do? Because uh, you do so, uh, most so it's, of it on so the So it's iPad. a few things. Um, there are some settings, numbers, as uh, has <laughs> some uh, features, especially in editing chart formatting, that um, you just can't do on the iPad version. You have to do it yeah. only on the Mac version. That gets. I, I didn't realize that, and I added a new uh, data set, and I realized I want to turn this circle into a triangle or whatever, and it's like, nope, go back to your Mac oh, for that, young son. Also, fonts, there are ways to install custom fonts on iPads. You can use third-party apps to do it. They get installed as like a cer That's font funky. certificate. It's That's super funky. weird. <laughs> yeah. You can do it, but I didn't have them installed, and I, I had changed the font to my, uh, my logo font, and I realized I didn't have it on my iPad, so so I had to take all of the screenshots on my uh, on my Mac. And then the big one was I had to do a lot of uh, text processing. So I needed to flip around uh, the attribution in my story because I, somebody pointed out I was quoting people with their name at the end and then quoting somebody else with their name at the end. And people were getting confused about who said what. And I wrote a little regular expression that just flipped it around so that it quoted them with their name at the beginning. And uh, now, Tell me the truth. Are, Did you have to go to your regular expression 
reference. I didn't. You knew I, how I didn't. to do I know, that. I know how to do that one. That's that one impressive. is not too complicated. Mm -hmm. But there are apps that will do this on iOS, but I didn't have them. And my text editors of choice on iOS don't have that feature. And then the one that really got me is BB Edit has this sort lines command. Love that Where too. I was able to, I had a list of 55 names and yeah. I needed it to be in alphabetical order by last name. Yep. And I was able to do yes. that in BB Edit with the sort lines command. With one command. In, in like five seconds. Yeah. And I, I, for the life of me, couldn't figure out how to do I that on iOS. I still use BB Edit, and I have to say, I keep that grep box checked all the time in my find and replace because uh, regular expressions are so powerful. Yeah, you got to learn them. They look weird. You can't really no, detect is, them until you learn them. But oh once you boy, learn them, it, it saves you, just, you so much time. I, I, I frequently have situations where I've, you know, our, every year our Christmas card list, I have to import it from a spreadsheet and munge it around until yeah, exactly it looks like right. real addresses. And having those that grep tool makes so much so Talk much because in lit literally here I'm looking for a quote a text in quotation marks followed by comma close quote said a name period and find that and then it grabs Reverse them it. and it flips them yeah. and I was able That's to go through in here. about two minutes yeah. and completely redo the entire five thousand word you, you did story full head. of quotes it was now great. the only thing that would impress me more is if you used said awk and grep. On the command line. To yeah, do it. no, that's too far for me. That's why I have BB Edit. <laughs> you know, I used to know how to do this instead, but uh, I have probably lost that since I had BB Edit, and I can do it. Now. You know, this, this is the this is the fourth or fifth time we put up that that graphic for the for the Jason for the benefit of people who are just listening via podcast. You want to read out what that grep is, just so they don't feel it left out. Oh yeah, sure. Well, it is a uh, quote mark <laughs> follow, followed by what is it? Period asterisk question mark parentheses. parentheses. You got to put those I, in parentheses. It, it is not human readable. And then bracket comma <laughs> question mark but backslash the dot. Once you learn it, mark. you look and you say, oh, it's going to grab a bunch of text that's in quotes <laughs> followed by a period question mark or comma followed by a close quote and then the word said followed by a bunch of letters. And a period, like you, you can you once you learn it, you can recognize it. The and question mark makes it lazy, right? Online. So it doesn't have BB to. BB Edit that. is free to try um, from barebones.com. He's got a pretty good and documentation. And the BB Edit manual has a right. yeah. great chapter on yeah. how to use pattern matching with with grep that will teach you almost everything you need to know. Yeah. So if oh, people oh. are curious about like <laughs> processing their text and saving time and learning this stuff, you can get BB Edit for free to try it out. And uh, you can learn it from the So manual. basically, yeah, so, so you understand what's happening here. This is the quote, is the first part. And this is the attribution, is the second part. And what he does is he flips them. So backslash two is the second part. Number two said number yeah. one. And then that's yeah. that. And so he's just flipping them. And I and do a lot of that for things like, oh, I forgot. I want to put all of these names in boldface or something like that. And if you can, if there's a pattern, all the names are at the beginning, followed by a colon, beginning of a paragraph, you can grab that and then put bold tags around this it. It seems obscure, like yeah. but the ability and to do not, this is really great. Go not, ahead. Not, not only that, but like it, it does seem obscure. And if, especially if you haven't done regular expressions before. But the thing is, it might take you 50. Uh, some, sometimes it might take me like 15 or 20 minutes to get the regular expression right, but that's balanced against what might have been like two hours on a long manuscript making yeah. the exact same change one at a time. And uh, I would much rather, if, even if it were a half hour of getting the regex right, at least that is interesting, intellectually stimulating uh, work. Whereas when you're just doing it one at a time, looking at search, replace, search, replace, search, replace, imagine you get so numb that you will miss so many of them. And you'll imagine going through this document, 5,000 word document, looking for every time somebody said, said name, and then select yeah. it and cut it and then select inside the end of the quote and put a period instead of the comma and then move to the beginning of the quote and paste it and change where the set is and put another comma. And also, not only is that super boring and you don't want to do that, you will make mistakes, right? Yeah. You will introduce right. mistakes and it's just a waste of time. So once you learn pattern matching and grep, uh, it will save you time. It's it's the best. And it does feel pretty old fashioned. This uh, it is one of my favorite computer books of all time mm, is Jeffrey Friedel's. Friedel. Mastering Regular Expressions. The first edition was about a quarter inch thick. I don't know if I have the second or third edition. I see he has a new edition. The one I have is about three inches thick. So some, suddenly he found a lot more to say about it. It is all on one subject. <laughs> regular Expressions. But if you know this, I don't know. 
Perl it, does it. Is, Python does it. Yeah. Most languages you, it's do portable it. to just about anywhere uh, you go. It's pretty. It's pretty. And it, uh, I know it's nerdy, obscure. but it's uh, like whenever we talk about on this show or on other tech podcasts about things like scripting and automation and stuff like that, there is a bar you have to clear, and it's a little scary. But I, I'd say if you're watching this show, if you're listening to this podcast, you're geeky enough. You might. You're yeah, you, this is the stuff that like you put in an hour's work. And and you have to find that hour, but you will get back like fifty hours. I mean, or that, yeah, that's, how I, that's hours. how I got. That's how I got into coding. Was I mean, admittedly, it was was but, grip. No, it was Dungeons and Dragons. Oh, I was tired of rolling <laughs> all the dice for non-player characters because they get killed so quickly. And so I just wrote a pro. My first basic program was to generate the character from scratch. Like I hit a button and then it just printed yeah. out. And and uh, yeah. and the uh, but pretty much my whole programming and everything even up until now when i use you know numbers to to build stuff it's i don't want to do this more than once right. like if, if i'm gonna if i do anything that looks like i'm gonna do it repeatedly i'm gonna figure out how to get something to do it for right. me right yeah no my, my my first dive into regex was uh was every time every time like i had a comic book database and I needed to like change the output a little bit. I could either rebuild the entire database, right. or I could just grep, <laughs> grep the text file, comma delimited whatever t text file I had into what I needed it to be for whatever Comic Con I was going to next week. Yeah. Uh, and, and it's just like you guys uh, were all saying that it takes time to learn this, but you're not you're not just uh, uh, when you do something manually, one hour of time is a total sunk and lost uh, cost. When you spend one hour learning how to automate. It, even if it would have taken you one hour, you've actually invested one hour's time into being able to do this in a half hour the next time, and then 15 minutes the next time. And then as you, as these uh, techniques start to really take hold of your brain, now it's like 30 seconds, and people wonder why you keep taking early lunches. I, I had I worked at a broadcast company, and my first job was as an intern to do uh, to do you won, you know, and we send you a T-shirt, you know, <laughs> you know, like like it was like you won. and anyway, everybody had done it for the last five years had typed that letter in and you know we you know, like had typed that letter to them and 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 so and so the whole job the whole internship job was to type those letters and to send those shirts and and i just figured out a whole mail merge to not only you know yeah. grab the names <laughs> and, and and print the and print it out but also print the label and everything else and so i took a, a job that took you know uh, six hours a day and it got into uh, about a half an hour that i did it and then that allowed me to learn photoshop you know, because there was nothing else yep. to do. You know, they, they they literally had no idea what to do with me because I, I yeah. and, and, and I, you know, I, I, I looked for things and then I finally, I learned Photoshop, I learned Quark, I learned Illustrator because there was nothing else to do at, at the for my internship. I can't tell you how many nerds I know who have told me that same story, which yeah. is yeah. this job, it's going to take eight hours. And then you're like, Let's, I'll be I'll be the judge of that. <laughs> let's, let's and within a pencils. week, you have. I mean, the dark version of that is that they continue to pull down a paycheck for years, doing one hour of work a week. Right. But the nice version of that is they're like, guys, I'm an intern. I'm going to leave at the end of the summer. Here's a tool you can do this without ever hiring another intern, I guess, or having them do something more useful with their time. Right, right it's great. Right. I love it. Yeah. I love it. I didn't know. I, I've ruined the show, Leo. I've made it all about regular expressions. Oh, now. that didn't ruin it. As far as I'm concerned, that's a big improvement. But, <laughs> unfortunately, actually, oh, we have to move on. Oh, <laughs> we no. We have to move on. <laughs> Alas. I want to, I want to, now let me see if I can find your uh, six colors. Because uh, the, the most recent article is about this and using the Mac and BB Edit to uh, put out your report card. Where are your. Yeah, keep Graphs. scrolling. Keep scrolling down, and you'll you gotta get, look pin the, them to the, the top. Look for the pie chart. Look for the pin pie chart. Pin them it's to blogs. the top. It's blogs, man. Leo. Blogs work where you put them at the top. I and always the have to go through this. You're right. You I post should probably, way the frick I should, it's, too it's, much. It's, it's there. It is. There it is. You gotta yeah. That's by it. category. You got iPhone sixty two percent. Services thirteen percent. That's yep. that's telling, isn't Services it? Services are growing. iPhone is there. This so this was the um the horrible quarter for Apple, right? The idea here is that they actually had to um restate their earnings because it was a worse quarter for iPhone sales than they thought, yeah. mostly because of China, although not entirely. It was still their second biggest revenue quarter of all time, but uh, only their third biggest iPhone revenue quarter of all time, which tells you something, that the rest of the business did really well, and the iPhone kind of hit an air pocket and, uh, and uh, did, did poorly, did very poorly. Yeah, but, I mean, it's not $38.9 billion well, in revenue. Well, the, that's the four-quarter average, so you want the- Oh, that's the rolling average. You, you, want, okay, the, okay, you okay. want the actual numbers. The quarterly $52 number. $52 billion dollars they made on iPhones. Right, 52. I wish I had that problem. And they had, and and it's a twenty billion <laughs> profit that quarter. Like Apple does not need you to do a GoFundMe for them, right? <laughs> it's not, it's not an issue. But 
it is, this is the holiday quarter. It's their biggest quarter. Uh, iPhone sales or iPhone revenue was down. There's no so doubt about it. And you, it's going to be down next You notice how peaky quarter, this too. is, and each of these peaks right. is the big quarter. That's why I do that averaged chart. Yeah, that makes it Because it takes out the seasonality. But if you draw a line going from each of the big quarters, you see that 52 is actually worse than it's been for, for, for two, right. two Although, big years. Although, interesting parallel is uh, it did go down the year after the iPhone 6 came out. And I'm starting to feel like this is just something we all need to acknowledge, which is every three or four years, Apple S comes out with a completely new phone yeah, design. This is an S and there's huge pent-up demand. Yeah. And then the rest of the time, they kind of don't. Also, yeah. Apple said the two biggest selling phones last quarter were the 10R and the 10S Max, not the 10S. And what do those two phones have in common? They weren't for sale last year. They're new yeah. in a way. They yeah. are different yeah. in some way that maybe somebody's like, oh, I can see. I can get a 10S bigger 10. 10S is basically a 10. 10S and the 10R are, are, you know, inside they're a little different, but they look exactly the same. Mm -hmm. And there are a lot of people who want something new and apple always talks about that as part of the chinese market and that's true but i think it's true more generally like oh that phone is totally new and last year they had that with the 10 and this year they don't have it as much and so are we really surprised in an era where everybody's already got one and that the buying cycle is lengthening that people would look at that phone and be like meh you know whatever it is I don't need telling one. that you had a 15 percent year over year drop in uh in uh and revenue and yeah. i will say that the 10 was a stunning jump forward from the eight you know like the you know like and that's the problem is is that i uh, i went up i mean i'm on the show so I, I mean i got a new phone but i but if i wasn't on this show i probably would not have bought a new phone and i probably would have been just happy happy with my 10 i think that's their problem yeah. is it was such a it's such a solid phone right and yeah. so that makes it even more cyclical where like everybody rushed out who wanted a big iphone and got that iphone 6 plus when it came mm -hmm. out they're like oh my god finally a big iphone um but then it that was it for a while right and the 10 mm -hmm. i think there was a lot of pent-up demand everybody was really excited about the 10 but it's also a thousand dollar phone and the next year you're like yeah i don't need another thousand dollar phone it's pretty much the same right and the 10r i think did pretty well because it is different um and it makes me wonder if the long run uh strategy for apple with iphones is going to be to have the iphone line kind of be a mix and have different ones kind of get different features year by year. So there's always something a little bit fresh and a little bit that different. Would be smart if you want I, to sell more I would phones. Think. The problem is, what do you add that you don't already have? Well, like the SE going away, I think there's an opportunity for them to do another kind of low end and and or small phone that doesn't currently exist in the product right. line. They could throw that in there. You could do three cameras. But the fact is, I mean, the fact okay. is, we don't live in the era where every year there's going to be a new smartphone that completely blows no. away all the smartphones no. of the year that's, before. That's it's over. a much more boring, yeah. flat, uh, incremental increase in smartphone tech, and that's just that's that's where we are now. And and all of us have to deal with it. All the phone makers have to deal with it. And uh, Apple. What Apple gets, they lose all of that dramatic growth that Wall Street loved. What they get is this annuity, which is they're going to be making billions and billions of dollars on iPhones for the foreseeable future. And they can use that money to invest in whatever the next big thing is. Exactly. And they have a lock on the most profitable customer base, yep. arguably in the world. As a group, you know, like, so the thing is, is there's an enormous amount of opportunity to continue to serve that market and, and make more money on it. You know, it's, it's, it's a, uh, because those are the, that's the group that spends the most money. Services, uh, of course, Tim Cook keeps pointing to services and we're actually really what Apple wants the press to think about is revenue per customer. Yep. And services is a big part of how they keep that revenue up. Because if you have an iPhone, oh, they also mentioned installed base for the first time. They're really yeah, big on that's, installed well, base. They can't talk about uh, sales numbers anymore because they they stopped they reporting they those, won't. and they also don't want to because they look it's bad. Not that they can't, but the installed <laughs> base looks to. good and continues to grow. So nine hundred million, yeah, nine hundred million iPhones, yeah. um, which which means get ready for that press release in a year or two where they a announce billion. a billion iPhones in use. That's in active use. In active use, yeah. And Cook pointed out, or maybe it was Luca pointed out that. We're seeing hand-me-downs that people buy a new iPhone, but they don't take the old one out of service. It gets handed down. My kids have my old ones. Yeah, and I think that's the kid. My kid has my 10. Uh, services up again. This is the four-quarter average, not the yeah. quarterly average. Yeah, but that's but that's a chart. I, I made a new chart, chart that, that's going to debut later, which is the um, 
which is uh, that year-over-year -year growth for services. And it's hilarious because all of the others, you've got to plot it with the chart um, in the center because some quarters are down and some quarters are up. The services chart just, just <laughs> goes can, up. You can start at zero. It just, it just goes up. It keeps going up. It's a huge part of their business. It is now bigger than their Mac and iPad business. And it's a very, that's a nice curve. Isn't too. It? I mean, it's smoothed just, out by yeah. the average, but like it just, <laughs> they go a, up every single curve. quarter and 10.4 billion for this year. This is part of their strategy. But now, I have to point out a good chunk of that comes from Google, right? I don't know if that count it counts in services. You mean the, like the search revenue? It's possible. Google, Google it's gives true. them I, I think billions. A huge chunk in fact, of it, it was is App Store revenue, right? Because the App Store is such a huge revenue generator, and then they give my, seventy know, percent of it back. Looking at this, and then and then the claim was that Google last year gave them nine billion for the, to be the default search engine in Safari. Well, two, two billion. And to this year on. was ten, twelve billion. So it can't, yeah, it can't be, be in this in number. No, because this number is only ten. That is probably billion. amortized across the product lines, right? That's probably goes into like it's part of the iPhone revenue or something like that. Yeah. But yes. Yeah, Still, they made almost 11 million in in services, and this is why dollars. they're going to come out with a video service this year and a news reading service this year, and who knows what else they're going to do because well, they want to, you know, these valuable customers, like Alex said, they want to be able to provide things that go beyond the hardware, and you know that leads Apple into a pretty weird place. I, I think you could argue, but. Um, it also sort of is the nature of the tech industry today, I oh, think. And but we've never had, and this could be scary and it could be good, but we've never had one organization handling distribution for movies, music, uh, print, all going through the same pipeline. The opportunities to intermingle those things. So having um, really interesting uh, media rich product projects uh, products in the in in the texture platform that happen to tie into the movie platform that happen to tie into the right. to the um, radio podcast radio po platform all of those things no one's because it's always been disparate organizations that don't really understand what they're doing um, they they just don't that doesn't happen you know they don't uh, this the movie industry doesn't understand the print industry the print industry doesn't understand the movie industry the you know the, there's all this this bit this back and forth and i think that there's going to be a really interesting opportunity where we start to see that um tie in much tighter uh between those platforms where you know and i think that that well, especially because next month we're going to hear about apple's streaming service yeah. whatever that is i think the services are getting so complex now that i am starting to believe that there will be some sort of bundle some sort of oh, amazon absolutely. prime, prime equivalent be. for apple there services that what would we'll you throw include in that bundle Oh, I mean, I think the the news service is a good example. The texture thing, Ma um, which is magazines, yeah. so news and so magazines, mu Apple Music, video, TV, Apple Music, um, iCloud, uh, backup movies. storage. But I, I think scary version is, is Apple doesn't change your Apple Music uh, Apple Music uh, cost, and they put the movies and the print into it. And it, that's that is the version that everyone would. If, if it doesn't scare them you know, to death, Google it should. did that. It could, Google it did be. that. That Google Music. They just said, okay, we're going to throw in YouTube Red, and now it's YouTube Premium, as part of your subscription. And I think that's a smart strategy, and I could see Apple doing it. But adding it. the magazines and adding the other bits and pieces. Well, that's a lot more. I think the challenge it. is Apple spending a billion dollars a year probably on video content. They want that money back somewhere. And that's the question is like just adding it to Apple Music and giving it they can free. deficit it's for not, a while. It's not giving it for free. It is it is saying that we're gonna it's have growing. it's increasing the value you of Apple Music, but you've got a lot of existing million. Apple Music subscribers. I, I just we'll we'll see. I'm I'm a little bit skeptical of I that. Mean, it certainly would be simple if you got to, to do it. A hundred you know, um a hundred million users paying, let's say, ten bucks a month is still a billion dollars a month. You know, of, of revenue. You know, it's, so, you know. Prime can do this because they have a revenue generator kind of underneath it, which as long as you're a Prime member, you're going to buy more stuff from Amazon, so we're going to make more money. What could Apple do with a bundle that would give them incremental income on top of the services they're selling in the bundle? Maybe sell more iPods, iPads, Apple f phones, Macs. I don't know. what. What's the underlying I, revenue growth there? I still, I still think that... Apple is in a perfect position to become a bank. No, I'm not. <laughs> Apple like it. Pay. Apple that's, Pay is no, no, part no, of the pay. services revenue. That's the Apple, service that, is that stepping, gifts, the gift that keeps on giving. I now, anytime someone lets me do Apple Pay, I, I now use Apple Pay because now I can change my credit card anytime I want. But not just, not, just, uh, not just at merchants, but peer-to-peer -peer Apple Pay. Yeah. I give yeah. you money. I give you money. 
That is that's well, a huge revenue and, opportunity. And if you look at a company that has that much cash that could actually the only reason they'd want to take your money for savings is to loan money to other people buying their products. It is a completely closed cycle. Yeah, that's interesting. It I, is, you know, and and it is and and Apple is the only company in the world that could do that. And I, and I, I think, think ultimately the story is going to be just that it is the Apple ecosystem and so you we can simplify it for you. You pay us. You get Just everything. Buy everything. And it, what that means is that people who are right now kind of like, I'll pick and choose. I'll have Spotify over here. I'll, it's like, no, you're just going to be all in on Apple. And that their advantage is going to be that the people are not going to choose the competition because it's just a better deal to get it all from messages. Apple, and, and they're already already in but, there. But I yeah. Think, yeah, I mean, if you look at, it, I mean, if you look at the number of people that use iPhones, and then you look at how many, you know, it's thirty eight million or 40, 40 million B of A customers. You know, Apple didn't wouldn't have to play very hard, and people will say, "Well, they don't want to deal with the regulations." Well, they're dealing with a lot of regulations for health. I mean, you know, the health is is more complicated than banking res regulations, so they're not afraid of doing that because the reason you do some things is not because it's easy, but because it's hard. Because it makes it very hard for everyone else to follow. You know, and Apple has the 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 wherewithal to to weather that that regulation storm in a way that other companies just wouldn't be able to do it. And I think that that. Health, banking, those are the kind of, those are the reasons that you get really serious about privacy. Uh, I always look at uh, Mac revenue because I'm just that kind of guy. And I have to say, this is the biggest Mac, quarterly Mac revenue ever. It is the biggest Mac quarter ever in terms of overall that's, revenue. That's mind-boggling. It's pretty good. And Apple says that it's the most install base, I think, for iPad and Mac ever. Um, it's, iPad it, revenue also This is the funny thing strong. is that lost in the iPad, phone loss, which is understandable because it's almost two thirds of their business, is the fact that the Mac and the iPad had really good quarters. It's not surprising when you think about the fact they that we got the Mac products. Mini. They had new well, products. Right? It's like, yeah, imagine that. You release new products that people want to buy and they're going to give you money for them. But it is the best iPad uh, year over year quarterly growth in six 17%. years, they said. But it was a, it was a dramatically enormous. better iPad. I mean, I think that was yeah. the thing. I mean, and yeah, pent up demand for it. Yeah, exactly. And yeah, and the, the Mac Mini. $329 iPad. The Mac Mini, well, the revenue numbers, right? That's the uh, <laughs> revenue numbers are aided by the thousand dollar iPad and the yeah. seven ninety nine iPad, um, but the Mac Mini and the MacBook Air too, which you know we a lot of people yeah. rolled their eyes at and said, oh, who cares about um, those products? But like, it mattered. There was a lot of pent up demand for those products, and the Mac sales show it. Is there any uh, graph you're particularly fond of that I haven't? No, they're all just, you know, colorful bar charts. I don't know. Okay, <laughs> let's talk about wearable home accessories only because Apple did a, too. did a little magic trick, which is this used to be called Other Products, and they've decided to rebrand as... But there's uh, nothing different in it. It's no, the same set. No, it's the set. exact same, same set basket. of numbers. But it's, you so it's know, the watch, it, it's the AirPods, it's the exactly. hub. But they've decided to market it a little bit yeah. instead of calling it Other. Well... Um, and that's, that's right, also more it, accurate. I yeah, mean, that's it, is, what it is right. AirPods and the watch, especially, but also like cases and and stuff like also that. Also, a record there. quarter four point. Now, this is. I'm sorry. That's this the is the fourth quarter, quarter average, but so that's the but yes, that is the that is the record. Yeah, seven point three billion. Yeah. In so revenue. all other aspects of their business are actually doing extremely well. Um, and I don't if think next that's year a you do a new iPhone, it'll show up like this, right? Uh, possibly, like a very different. If they do, if they do and improve, you know, whether it's in 19 or in 20, that'll happen. But I think that the, the, what's interesting, I don't think it's a coincidence because I think Apple has known, they started talking about services four years ago. Apple has known for a long time that the smartphone uh, era of explosive growth is over. Yeah. And so the question is, how do we keep growing the company? What else can we do? I don't think it's an uh, accident at all that all of these other product lines are showing really good signs right now. They, that's one of the ways they counterbalance as they much as they know. can. They know. The fact that the iPhone sales, again, not are not crashing, but they're not going to be going up, up, up. Well, anymore. the up, up, up was not from the U.S. market. It was from China. You know, not for a long up. time. Yeah. yeah, and and so. It, of course, what they got surprised in in the last quarter was that China slowed, it cooled off so quickly. Yeah, if you but look they at could the, see that they could see it happening. If you look at the regional year-over-year -year growth, China plummeting. If you look at the uh, um, regional four-quarter average, China going down. Yeah, yeah. While Ch America's China, goes up, China looped China above Europe. Europe for a while, and yeah. is now China revenues back below yeah. Europe because Apple has definitely had a challenge in China. I'll uh, show you with Tim, iPhone. Tim Cook's favorite chart. I'll show you right here. This is total Apple money, money, profit, money. Yeah. twenty billion dollars in three months. Just walk away with uh, twenty That's billion. Almost double what Google made in three Again, months. You know, Apple doesn't need to go fund me. They're going to be fine. <laughs> going to be fine, be kids. Fine.
That's that would be my favorite chart. Twenty billion. This is profit. Well, I love I love the I love the press that talks about the end of Apple. You know, like like yeah, they're doing okay. I mean, if, if they just coasted for the next decade, well, that, they would still be making more than almost everybody else. That's the big thing about this. And I know Andy and I have talked about this a lot, this idea that um, one of Apple's greatest threats is its success because it's true. It could do nothing, literally nothing for about 40 years <laughs> and right. still uh, pay everybody, right? right? So the challenge is uh, how, if you're Tim Cook, I mean, that's that's why he has one of the hardest jobs, I would say, in the tech industry because he has to figure out how to have Apple keep what makes Apple unique while also making it a very, it is a very different company than when Steve Jobs was in charge of it already, yeah. just in terms of scale. Mm -hmm. And how do you manage that? How do you navigate having uh, this world where, uh, you know, the, the services is a big part of the mix. It's hard because they are, they have huge resources and they have to choose what to do with them and what path to walk. And it's a good problem to have to make $20 billion in a quarter, <laughs> but still, you know, who are they now? And, and because they aren't the old Apple, they, they kind of can't be at the scale yeah. they are. Okay, yeah, we buried the lead once again. The most important story of the week, Emoji 12.0 have been announced. Right. 59 new emojis, 75 if you include gender variation, 230 when you include all the skin tone options, starting with the yawning emoji. And then I don't know what we're going to characterize this emoji as. It's a little, it's a little bitty emoji. Uh, it's a fingers showing size. Just keep that away from the eggplant emoji and you'll be okay. Uh, I like this one, hearing aid emoji. I don't know when I would use it, though. What? I, what? I can't hear you. What? You I don't know. Go. It's it's also not obvious what it is if you've never <laughs> worn or seen known anybody with a hearing aid. It's not clear what's wrong with his ear. Uh, there. What is she doing? There's a person waving her finger at you. Oh, I know. She's That's deaf. the Virgin America. No smoking. Finger wave. She's deaf. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that goes with the ear. hearing aid. Okay, so they're tapping their ear. Okay, see, I, that's yeah, just shows you how clear. emojis are not immediately obvious. But if you're uh, used to ASL, right, that would be, I can't, I don't, I'm deaf. Okay, I get it. Sorry. Is that ASL or is that a universal sign? I don't know, because the different sign languages have different signs, too. I don't know. I imagine that Jeremy at Emojipedia will explain all... He'll explain, all and we'll have Jeremy on, I'm about sure. ...about the cultural background of A lot of, of this was signs. for uh, people of differing abilities. Here's a prosthetic uh, limb, an arm, and a leg. Uh, people in chairs. And, by the way, motorized and unmotorized. Nice to have the uh, distinction there. Here is uh, somebody with a cane. Um, what's the deal with these people? I don't know. They have their hair disabled. What is the, I don't know. Here's somebody kneeling. Is that a yoga position? I don't, sometimes I wonder what, what is new about these? I don't get it. What's new about those people standing? Do they never have that before? Now they have people standing and you mm -hmm. can mix and match both genders and colors as they hold hands. Very, uh, very uh, wonderful. Inclusive. Yes, uh, standing, kneeling. Standing and kneeling. Okay. Did, we didn't have that before? Nope. Okay. Well, we've had holding hands for some time. We have a sloth. Ooh, new animals. We've maybe, got, they're the, maybe they're the ones that work better when they've placed next to other emojis, like a campfire. Ah, that's ah. it. And okay. now uh, we have, for your delectation, the really the new icons. And these are seeing eye dogs, two different kinds. Service or maybe, dogs? oh, wait a minute. Service one's, animals, yeah. One's a service animal, one's a seeing eye dog. Okay, got it. A flamingo on one leg. Okay, now you're going to have to help me with your animal lore. Is that a sloth. lemur or a sloth? sloth. 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 That's a sea otter, right? Yeah. Still right. no honey badger. Still, orangutan Still no honey, honey badger. Skunk, I know. A waffle with butter. Butter by itself. Something that supposedly is baked potatoes, but that's disgusting. I don't know what I that is. I thought that was a coconut. Yeah. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. Maybe it's a coconut. Maybe it's a baked potato. I mean, yeah, that's bagel game Garlic. Right there. <laughs> Garlic. These are the official... Reference emojis from the, emo the oh, uh, these Unicode are the Apple Consortium. Ones. So these, we no, haven't no. seen the apples. I yet. don't think these are official. I think these are uh, Emojipedia commissions and artists to do oh. these as references. I think. I think. Um, um, and Unicode Consortium just Jeremy, does words, Jeremy's right? Jeremy's on the committee, but I think right. Unicode Consortium just does like those patent illustrations, does like little outlines and words, oh, okay. and then Jeremy Burge 
is the one who commissions are, this okay, art. These are Jeremy's this is emoji. The thing that's not widely known is that there is no reference emoji per se in terms of the art. There's kind of emoji fragmentation. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the all of the major vendors are on the emoji committee, so yeah. I think they have all they're all, they all converging, yeah. but they all have to do their own art. And yeah. yeah, Jeremy pays an artist to to make the emojipedia version because he knows people are interested so, in this, and we won't see this until. October probably on iOS yeah, and, yeah. and then sometime this midsummer for uh, Android. Yeah. Well, yeah. I'm really unhappy with the garlic. I, I think that the garlic now's your this is Jeremy. Yeah, this is exactly. Jeremy. So yeah. Jeremy, I'm sorry, but uh would you, that, it, Carson, it, it would you look is, that up? Is that a potato soft. or a coconut? What is that? Uh there's an onion. Andy's uh, there's a juice box. I love this urban mate cup, which will only be recognized in some South American countries. Yeah. But I have a Paraguayan Herba Mate cup. It looks just like that. I don't even know what's next to it. What a is pearl it? and an oyster. Oh, pearl and oyster. Okay. Or a loogie. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I looked at it. I was like, I have <laughs> I no don't idea know. what I'm looking at. A uh, guy in a parachute, uh, tidy whities a safety coat. That uh, is a falafel. That's a falafel. A falafel. Neither an eggplant. I didn't recognize it I out of its see that pita. Coming. Yeah, without a pita, I don't know. That's a falafel. That or some hummus. And is this a sari? Uh, ba this ba toe okay. shoes, a uh, snorkel and mask, bathing suits for men and women. Angkor Wat gets its own is Hindu that temple. No, Indian temple. Yeah. Hindu. Hindu. Yeah. Hindu temples, not Angkor Wat. There's a uh, cane, uh, wheelchairs of two different varieties, stethoscope. What is that? Blood. blood. Drop of blood and a band aid to go with the hypodermic. Huh. Yeah. Finally, and you donate some blood. You can, you can use your a blood emoji. Straight edge razor. Wow. I don't. I think that that may be a controversial one. And the as with it's the just, axe, it's just razor. So, razor. Uh, companies are free to use their own. And uh, the, and then this one is called the Lizzie Borden, right? The <laughs> yeah, axe. Exactly. Uh, we've got a kite. We've got a yo-yo, a chair, and a finally, ladies and gentlemen, a banjo. We've needed that for so long. Long last. Uh, a a sweaty ice cube, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Uh, what is this next one here? Is that a lamp? candle lamp? It's like an olive Saturn like an olive oil lamp. And Saturn, Golf like, cart? Like, do, do we have Jupiter right now? Or is I think Saturn? I'd be I, if I were in the Mars contingent, I'd be. very I wonder upset. if that's a planet emoji. It's probably a planet. Yeah. No, but that okay. is a ringed planet. Ringed. Planet. Ringed. Oh, oh nice. how many ringed Not planets Saturn. are there? Yeah, there's sort of well, Saturn in this particular and... solar system. Well, there's the one rings. big one that you've heard of. <laughs> <laughs> are there? Wait a minute. Are there some unknown ringed planets? Well, I mean Jupiter. Jupiter, Uranus, and Neptune all have rings. But you but just can't see them? Yeah, Do we I, have rings? No, we, we got don't. a ring, too. We don't. That's a lie. Don't believe it. <laughs> don't believe the ring The, the ring Did people. Did you know that the rings are a relatively late phenomenon? Yes. That's wild. I thought, oh, that must be millions of years old. No, it was like 2004. Um, mm. <laughs> or something. A, Interesting. The lamp is a Dia lamp. A Dia lamp. It's a, another, another Hindu. A Dia lamp. Okay. Uh, a, a white heart and a copper heart to go with the red, white, mm -hmm. and blue hearts. And are these are these emoji or just colors? Those are uh, color, orange circle, yellow circle, green circle. Oh, yeah, just okay. more shapes with colors. Shapes, shapes with, with colors. colors. Your favorites uh, in here, guys? You got one that you really like? You're going to be using a lot? I think the waffle for me is something I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to find many, many uses for a waffle. Uh, I'm, uh, I don't <laughs> I think yeah. the, I think the razor has Sweeney Todd. Uh, There's a very potential. Sweeney Todd, yeah. <laughs> Especially combined with the blood drop, I think you could really have some fun. Yeah. Next up, next to a pie and next a blood drop, next to a banjo. Oh, I'm excellent! Gonna, excellent. I'm going to be using the little like uh, itty bitty, uh, itty, itty bitty, yeah, just a little, little, just, just a little, little, just a little. It's called oh the just a little emote. What is the okay now, Carson? What are the names? What's the name of that? You're looking at the text description. What is the name of that? I think, I think that'll be to, the next it's time. It's known as pinching hand, light skin tone, <laughs> medium light skin tone. Pinching, yeah, pinching hand. hand. I think, I think is that a like, yawning are you guy? Mad? It, 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 in context, um, it's some, someone asks, are you mad? And then you face. send that back. Just a little. Yawning, yawny face. Okay. So I realize that people, you know, there were probably listeners who were like, why are they talking about emoji? But because I always hear from those people, the em emoji curmudgeons, but like. Don't be emoji, emoji curmudgeon. People use it. It's expressive. It is the solution to the thing, you know. We've been online, all of us, for a long time now. And one of the things you find when you go online is that text doesn't do it, right? Like text, it's really easy to be misinterpreted with text. And emoji really has kind of found this place where 
it's more expressive. It well, makes, I look at it. I it's look, so much easier to communicate. It's a language. You know, we started emoji. with emoji, and then we went to text, and now we're going back to emoji. You know, like yeah. it's, it, you know, my, my, I look at my, my my daughter will send me this long string of emojis, and it, and I'm like, it looks like hieroglyphics. You know, like it's just yeah. it's just like a whole you know, there's a whole little process there. Some uh, rejects well, the why you know <laughs> fingers together. <laughs> why you know. Apparently, and kissy chef. I don't. These the, are these are much requested. The chef's kiss is not. Made. You have to uh, give Apple some credit for the people of dis disabilities emojis. Mm -hmm. That was a big push from uh, Apple. Um, flamingo, sloth, triceratops, and dog faces were requested. And for some reason, the white heart, which did in fact get in there, mm. was highly requested. No Wi-Fi symbol. Uh, these are the already uh, approved ones. So there you go. Badger. Badger. Where's the Where's our badger? badger. Didn't make it. Badger. Didn't I think make we it. Start a campaign. Oh our, no, the badger's badger. been approved, ladies not and gentlemen. It's not a honey but it's badger. not a honey badger. It's just a badger. Well, you badger. just put the beehive emoji in the oh, there badger. You, you can make it. And, that's really part of the fun of emojis is the creative making a rebus. Sure. Creative emoji rebus. Wow. Wow. Okay, have we covered this to your satisfaction? Mm. <laughs> Ad and beyond. <laughs> yeah. Well beyond. Uh, let me just quickly look at the... Uh, Apple says they're storing some Russia data on Russian servers as they do in China. That's by government demand, request, and law. And that's what you're going to see in every country that demands that. I think so. Apple has reached a deal with France to pay a half billion dollar, a half billion euro fine. Mm. Uh, I mentioned that earlier. In back yeah. back taxes. I, we didn't mention it the, uh, in the show, though. I think I mentioned it before the show. If I did, I apologize if I've already said that. Um, did you do the uh, Apple Heart Month activity challenge on your watch? No. no me no. neither. <laughs> I will admit, though, that I, I, I find myself each day trying to figure out how I'm going to close my rings it does work. It does work. Like I, I'm just like, oh, you I'll get walk that, a little bit more. I'll, that I'll do notification this. at eleven forty five PM. <laughs> you just yeah. one just a mile and a half walk and close that ring. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna run out that door. I don't go I don't go that far. Okay. That's a little over the top. <laughs> Apple music is free now on American flights. Yeah, and I would imagine they're gonna preload all their video originals on there too, right? When those come and out. I imagine every airline will jump on that it's, bandwagon. It's, right? This is the way of marketing now. Very smart. Netflix has a similar deal with somebody. You have to subscribe to Apple Music to be able to listen. I bet you do. I don't think you do. No, no. I think they have I curated playlists that you can listen to without being a subscriber. Yeah. Apple Music subscribers oh, okay. can stream over fifty million songs. But I bet you're right that if you're a non subscriber there's like some there's curated a playlists. Yeah. Something like that. But yeah. the idea is that yeah, if you are a customer, you don't you know, you can use the plain Wi Fi to to listen to that stuff. Without paying for a plain Wi Fi. Yeah. I think that actually is great. It actually yeah. does make me well, it does two things. Either make me want to fly American or have an Apple Music subscription. I already have the Apple Music subscription. So if I just load all my songs all the time. I like do any too, playlist that's a pain. I'm just like sure. uh, I know. Isn't that a pain? Your Beats One Global live stream are curated playlists as well. So that's, I think, for people who are not uh, members. Oh. Yeah, because you get Beats One if you're not a member, right? This is what I meant by uh, Apple's not the same company it used to be. They're making Boy. like online con or uh, airline content deals from online to airline now. Hey, but I they've never really <laughs> talked about the numbers and how many people listen to Beats One, but I bet you it's a really large number. I like, we don't think. We don't think about, I, I mean, I've, I've probably listened. I used to listen. The guys used to listen to it in the shop. So I used That's to the it. radio station. Yeah. With Julie yeah. and Tanuga and mm -hmm. Zane, Zach Lowe and all those yeah. people. Yeah. yeah. I bet you that number, though, is big compared to radio stations. Sure. You know, like when you think of a regular terrestrial radio station and you're, you know, oh, well. you're in the L.A. or New York market and you might you might have 10 million uh, or 5 million or whatever the cum is. Uh, I bet you the number is much bigger than that. J.P. Morgan says. <clears throat> A bank analyst note that Apple should take its two hundred fifty billion in cash and buy Netflix, <laughs> Disney, J P Morgan. Thank you for the suggestion. Because because the the most important thing to do when you have a big big pile of cash is to spend all of it. Spend it so you can make more. What's what's Netflix's Spend it on a value? company that has gone billion. into a large amount of debt in order to get yep. market share. Don't do it. By buying content, the business that you are also now buying content in. I think we're so. in agreement that Apple should not buy Netflix. Yeah, no. I mean, yes. they could, but I, yes. I think... I, they could buy an island's nation. They could. They could. 
They could. There's a lot of that things they work. could buy. I think Canada would be less than that, but <laughs> they shouldn't. Probably not. Stay, <laughs> stay away. You think that should I, buy Netflix? Disney. Disney. No. <laughs> oh, that's all we need. Disney's more than two hundred billion. <laughs> Billion. I like the eye rolls that Andy is doing. Like I can, I can feel them all the way across the country. Uh, it's 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 just that they're 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 not creative stewards of oh, the things that they buy. Yeah. They 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 always go for the most commercial thing they can possibly go for, as opposed to something like the Netflix or Hulu or one of these streaming services that needs to have a certain amount of character to it. Uh, has to do some things that are really kind of out of the not not only have the hits but also has to get some things that are sort of out of the normal realm of what most people are looking for because there's going to be that 10 percent of everybody that's looking for something that they've never heard of before and uh, i i think it would be dangerous if disney were to buy it and certain and and plug netflix into its no no, no i'm not talking about its disney buying netflix tactile. i'm talking about Apple, Apple buying, buying Disney. Apple. No, I, we just I, looked at Disney's market cap oh, for eighty-five cash, billion. Apple no. could buy fifty-one uh, percent of Disney. Just take it over. I mean, the thing is, is that there's so Hostile many crossovers takeover. for Apple when it comes to uh, experience at the at Disneyland and Disney World and AR and and tying in all the stuff and using it as a big. You know, there's there's a, that there's all the Disney characters that they could be using for things. There's yeah. then there's just buffing up the con the content. Yeah. I, uh, but what, what, would they, what would they do with it? Oh, what, no, it's like, like, really what, hard what to get that, that, that IP otherwise. Star that would require Wars and, uh, a reconceptualization or, of what NBC, Apple is beyond ESPN. even what we've talked about today, right? Which yeah. is which I, I can't say it's not possible because I feel like with Amazon and and Google and Apple, these companies are so enormous that who's to say that they won't Spotify's, end up continue swallowing other would, companies? Spotify's buying right. Gimlet for $200 million. <laughs> I'd sell Twit App for 100 <laughs> million, no problem. Apple, Apple, Apple could buy Disney if they were to decide that they don't care about being a technology company or a design company anymore. If they wanted to redefine themselves as sort of a of a uh, of a uh, 3M, just we are a company that buys other companies they and can do so we don't we don't actually make either. anything. That's but that's not the character of Apple. I don't think they would give half a damn about uh, about owning Disney. I think we all agree that the J.P. Morgan analyst is full of it, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah like, what is he talking about? <laughs> this is Dude. famous last words that we're going to come back to this in six months when Apple owns Netflix and we'll be like, oh, oh. Man, well. no, I know. I was the one who said Apple will never buy Beats. What is that? That's crazy. That's a false rumor, which was immediately debunked like three minutes after I said it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's take a final break. And then if you would... I think Jason has a rather elaborate pick of the week. Oh, do you want yeah. to mention this? We have a, yeah, we just uh, breaking, just breaking news? Angela Aarons, the Apple retail chief, is leaving Whoa. apparently. Oh, okay, so months. I misunderstood what? the uh, I misunderstood the import of that press release. Uh, they've got a new executive in charge of retail and people, right, Deirdre O'Brien. But I didn't understand she was oh my goodness replacing Angela Aarons. Yeah, <gasps> that is a big deal. That's well, five years. Angela Aarons has been at at Apple Retail. Just long enough after being best. CEO of Burberry, but uh, but she's leaving, and they have a new. And uh, it was it was only in October that uh, Angela Arantz appeared on stage in a fine Burberry coat. You know, she has been the best dressed person on stage at Apple events ever, <laughs> and I will miss that because this has to be she a surprise has, high for style. Apple, right? I, yeah, I, I don't know. Wouldn't it be wonderful if, like, as part of her tenure, just she took it upon herself to like dress the other people on stage by saying, you know, maybe you could like. I don't know. You're the CEO of a big company. Just dress up a little bit. Like Deirdre O'Brien is uh, is an in-house uh, uh, promotion. She's been at Apple for thirty years. Yeah, and was the head of what they call people, which is because HR. it was yeah, it was personnel. Then it was HR. Now it's people, but that also includes things like Apple University. And of course, the it, it seems weird. It is also true though that the vast majority of Apple's employees are retail employees. So. You know, they, they have so, a lot But of I do have to place. wonder if this is a temporary appointment uh, until they can find somebody with the kind of retail. You know, they had a very bad experience prior to Angela Arons with Tom Johnson, who came from JCPenney. He wasn't a good match. Or no, went no, no, to no, 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 no. Ron Johnson Ron started Johnson. it, and he was good. It was the guy from the uh, reseller in the UK. Dixon. Is it Dixon's? Dixon's. Yeah. That guy was a disaster, yeah. bad fit, didn't fit, yeah, and he was out of there. Right. And then they went to Angela Arons, who gave up a CEO job. It was always kind of a, a fascinating choice, right? She gave up a job as CEO of Burberry. Well, she got paid a lot more Apple. in order to come to Apple. Yeah, but still, you're going from from being a CEO to not running the show to, to from yeah, answering that's to a, nobody. I wonder if that's, that's that's big 
big yeah. fish in little pond versus little fish in really big pond. Well, we'll see where she goes next, right? But I think right. maybe maybe she said, "I'll give you five years." Maybe Apple that was says the, it's the whole for story. personal and professional reasons. Yeah. Uh, Tim Cook said, "I want to thank Angela for inspiring and energizing our teams over the past five years. She's been a positive, transformative." force for both Apple stores and the communities they serve. We wish her the very best as she begins a new chapter. Aaron said the last five years have been the most stimulating, challenging, and fulfilling of my career. Through the team's collective efforts, retail has never been stronger, I would agree, or yeah, better Yeah, and positioned. she had to clean up the mess yeah, that was made Dixon's, by and, yeah. and I, I would guy. say that they, I, you feel like the retail is been, under her guidance, has been you know, hitting on all cylinders. I mean, they, they really, I mean, the, the, the stores get more and more interesting and they, they, you know, it's, it's um, a better experience. So I think she's, she's done a good job. Absolutely. And I do wonder what's next uh, for Angela Aarons, but uh, that's a breaking news just came in an Apple press release. Uh, Aarons is leaving in hmm. April, just a few months from now after five years at Apple. Let us, uh, let us pause to think about what that means and prepare our picks of the week and I will talk a little bit about where I hang my hat on the web, and that's WordPress.com. Such a big fan of WordPress.com. So many big publications use WordPress.com. Maybe people don't know that. Quartz, Fortune. I just uh, saw another site I was reading that is based on WordPress.com. I can't remember the name, but actually it could be almost anybody because 33% of, of the entire web, 33% of the entire web is on WordPress, that's a pretty astounding f statistic well, because WordPress is great. I mean, there's there's nothing you can't do with WordPress, e-commerce, publishing, or just your own personal blog. If you're a business, if you're an individual, you need a place, a place on the Internet that's yours, a place where no one can, you know, no one can say boo to you. No Mark Zuckerberg can say, well, we don't like what you're doing or you know, you, it's not enough to have a Facebook page. Yeah, you should have that for your business or a Twitter feed. Yeah, you should have that. But you really need a place to link back to. That's your home on the web at WordPress.com. Great site building tools that will make your site look unique and match your aesthetic. They have thousands of the teams, themes, I should say. Uh, they do have a great team of WordPress experts to support you 24-7. WordPress.com lets anyone pursue whatever it is they love by launching a site that's free to start and has room to grow. No two-week trials, no hidden fees. With WordPress, you own your own content forever. You can upload images, videos, text, of course, uh, photos, and download them to at any time. And it will grow with you no matter where you want to be. I actually started with the free tier 12 years ago. Worked my way up. Now I have a business plan, and I just love it. I just love it. WordPress.com. Right now, you can go to WordPress.com slash MacBreak and get 15% off any new plan purchase. 15% off at WordPress.com slash MacBreak. 33% of the Internet runs on WordPress, shouldn't you? LeoLaporte.com is my WordPress site. Uh, WordPress.com site. Take a look at it. WordPress.com slash Mac break. I'm going to take a chance. Oh, I bet you're running on the other guy. Six colors. Could be, yes. Could I'm be. running on obsolete software that is not, <laughs> I don't recommend to anybody. Don't you know, use what I'm using. WordPress.com has a home for you, That's too. That's what I hear. <laughs> uh, let us, you have a whole setup here, so I'm going to let Jason start with his pick of the week. What is All this? Right. I have two. I mean, the first one is the, uh, hello, everybody. Is the, <laughs> it uh, looks like you're having a dental actually, procedure is, at this is, point. It's something called the Luna Display, which is not here, which is just, uh, and I should, disclaimer, they they're a sponsor of some of my podcasts, but I actually bought on their Kickstarter before they were ever a sponsor. Um, what I find fascinating about this product, if you haven't heard about it, is it's from the same people who have done a bunch of other things involving using your Mac uh, as a kind of graphics tablet via the iPad, and and they built uh -huh. some great tools for it. I use Duet to do this. How is yeah. this different? So this is interesting because there's a hardware component. You plug it into uh. either a Display Port or a USB-C port. But what has happened since the Mac Mini was released is that a lot of people who love their iPad but also use a Mac have bought a Mac Mini and plugged one of these things in, and then anywhere in their house they can get a very low latency, very high quality uh, Mac image on their iPad. So how, what is the range on this? Uh, if it's on your local Wi-Fi network, it works. You can't take it out of the network. So it doesn't have oh, to that's be... that's so cool. So right, I could do it anywhere in the house. You can do it anywhere in the house. 
Okay, uh, it doesn't do I'm a sold. software keyboard, so I still have Screens, which is the app I use for remote access, and I use that if I need to type on a software keyboard. But if you've got a hardware keyboard, if you've got that keyboard that comes with the iPad Pro, people are starting to use this product for what it was not intended for, which is uh, as kind of like turning your Mac, uh, a Mac Mini is a good example, into kind of a headless Mac, you, and then you just your use iPad your iPad. Pro. Yeah. Uh, which it, oh. it really works. I I'll do things like airdrop myself things where I'll just I'll I'll turn on airdrop and drag a file in and then hold my iPad kind of near the Mac Mini and the file comes over and anyway it is so full disclosure they have sponsored some of my podcasts I'm but intrigued. but I bought one uh, before that and I I think it's fascinating that a lot of people who are really into the iPad now still need access to the Mac and are kind of using this as their Mac access point is via this sort of screen control, remote control. And you just touch the screen to interact with the interface. So if you want to pull down a menu, you suddenly the just Mac is oh a touch. Goodness. the menu. A touch interface. You mean the Mac interface actually works on with a touch? touch screen? It's shocking. You see Apple Pencil with it. The, um, the other product and the, and, and the one that I brought with me is this uh, is a stand from a company called Clear Look, which I had never heard before I, uh, before I bought this stand. They uh, sell it on Amazon. I am always pursuing new iPad stands because <laughs> I enjoy using an external mechanical keyboard uh, with my iPad. This is a very expensive I, segment. This is I, very stand, expensive. Uh, <laughs> I stand up oftentimes at the bar in my kitchen and write articles. I love um, this stand. Th this stand, uh, it is rotatable. So, of course, you can write articles. I love writing articles in vertical mm. mode instead of horizontal. It's very nice. But if you're using a side-by-side -side multitasking, you can do it in horizontal as well. You just turn it. It tilts. But... Um, and I've I've written about a couple stands like this. What makes this stand different, and my, why my friend Mike Hurley recommended it to me, is it is the it is 18 inches of height that you can get. So many iPad stands are stable. so low down. It's very stable because there's a kind of a heavy base. And this is the 12.9 iPad that, Pro that I'm right using now. here. Um, so awesome. many of them are so low that you can use them, but you end up kind of hunched over and it's no good. And this one you can get up at a good ergonomic height and use it. And I uh, I use it all the time. Also, I've got this Leopold. I just Leopold, bought two of them. <laughs> I've got this Leopold mechanical <laughs> keyboard me, here. One of the unstated things that- Which that, kind is this? This is a Leopold FC660. I like its name. Um, it's a little mini keyboard. But one of the nice things that I hadn't really thought about before about the new iPad Pro is USB-C- even keyboard. though, yeah, it doesn't do it doesn't yeah. do a lot of things in terms of storage and all of that. It has enough power coming out of that port now that pretty much any USB device oh. that's bus powered will work with it, including every keyboard I own. So this, I don't have to do anything. I can just plug this in. I'm using a dongle here to do it, and it works great. It works just fine. So this is my setup that's at awesome. home when I want to take a break from my iMac. I just uh, use this clear look stand and the. Uh, the big and it's uh, hardwired keyboard. connected, which is awesome. Yeah, you can use a Bluetooth keyboard if you want, but this is uh, it's harder to find good mechanical Bluetooth keyboards. Yeah. And I have a bunch of these USB ones laying around, so do I just they, use those. Do those stands uh, break down well? Uh, this one, well, I mean, it's going to have By the which big, he means, can I put it in my it, suitcase? Yeah, yeah. It's it's this one doesn't. Uh, you can unscrew it. You could actually okay, take the base off of it, mm -hmm. so you could do that. Cool. Yeah, I'm gonna get so one of fun. these Leopolds too. These are I, we were talking about the code keyboards and the DOS keyboard, and this is a pretty nice. That, that is, too. I'm using a different uh, mechanical keyboard at my Mac now. This is my old one, so I've kind of repurposed it to the iPad. Yeah, um, there are a bunch of good. I have uh, a bunch mechanical of keyboards, keyboards lying around, there. around yeah. though. Yeah, so yeah, it's a problem. <laughs> I per, I, I, it's a good problem to have. Yeah, Cherry Brown. Is I think my I choice. might use my IBM. M there, keyboard there is with an nothing iPad. like using an old style <laughs> clicky keyboard with an iPad. You practically have to raise <laughs> it is your arm to type with it. You know, it is right. amazing. It's such key travel. Very nice. Okay, I just bought a lot of stuff I shouldn't. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh huh. I think I think you just bought. I just made me buy a Mac Mini. That's the thing that's Excellent. really really <laughs> scary. Because now I'm thinking. I want to use a Mac Mini. Well, you can use it, I mean, in the house. You can use it with any Mac. You you know. I guess I could use. I already have an iMac Pro. Yeah. Could I plug into the back of yeah, that? Yeah, the challenge there is that that screen is so much larger than your iPad screen yeah. that it's going to have to be scaled down. Oh, could... oh what the heck? <laughs> How big a screen does the Luna display support? Any size? Well, any size. Is... You know, so that 12.9 iPad Pro will do a uh, wonderful nice. job. Hey, maybe I'll just Full get retina. one of these and see if how well it works on the yeah, iMac. Yeah, give it a try. I guess. It's, very, it's very it's a very clever thing because what they're doing is they're fooling the unlike a lot of the software solutions the hardware dongle basically fools the Mac into thinking that it's um, got an external monitor attached and that turns mm -hmm. on all the hardware acceleration oh, right. which is why it it works better right. <laughs> all right 
<laughs> I broke Leo. You can, it's, it's you can use it with mini display port too if you had a really old backliner. Yes, I tried that with my MacBook Air and it did not want to go into retina mode. Choice. Shocker. Not a good it choice. Didn't, but it did work. Oh, this is I'm buying one. Okay. So that's 180 bucks you cost me. All right, you're welcome. All right. Um, I, geez, I better go to Andy because I know he's going to have something inexpensive like Coca-Cola or something. <laughs> yeah, I, I do have something cheap. Uh, this is actually not unrelated to the iPad. Uh, a lot of people, like especially artists that I know, they love the Apple Pencil. They love the art tools on the iPad. What they don't like is drawing on a sheet of like slick glass. Uh, and a friend of mine who is a professional artist, Chris Eliopoulos, uh, as a matter of fact, he has a brand new book out today uh, in a series of kids' books called uh, "Ordinary People Change the World." Uh, he drew the he drew the book uh, "I Am Billie Jean King," which uh, which is being released today. Tells her story. Uh, he's, How he's many times have I said that? <laughs> yep, <laughs> and tells all. And he, he's drawn all these books in the series. But basically, to communicate that this is not just like someone like me who just doodles for fun. Uh, he started recommending this oh, this screen cover called "Paper Like" that he says absolutely just oh. makes his it really really helps out it really makes the surface of this of the ipad underneath the apple pencil feel like he's drawing on paper again uh and he absolutely loves them and pretty you get two for something like 30 it says here 33 dollars uh i i assume like like most screen covers yes it's two but they give you two because they assume you're going to screw up one uh, when you try to apply it but it does give you like all the all the stuff that you need to like actually apply the thing correctly uh and so uh, i i i feel I, I feel what he's saying it's like uh there there are a lot of people i know like myself in included that i love these tools but there's something about like the texture feedback of like a a, a, a pencil against paper uh that, that have something with a little bit of grit a little bit of teeth to it uh has got to really really help and for 33 bucks for a pack of two uh it's got to be a, if nothing else it'll keep the glare off your screen it'll it'll protect your screen a little bit uh and it has the 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 thumb of endorsement of superstar <laughs> superstar artist chris iliopoulos so what else do you I've want i always thought that they were that apple would eventually change the stylus just a little bit so that we would get more of that of, of that bite but they never did i'm, I'm or, or at least or at least give you like interchangeable tips for like different kind of feel didn't they yeah, promise exactly. interchangeable tips That's what they, you know it's there well uh, they sw swappable swappable just in but case like one a different wears kind out, but, but i yeah. thought they promised different yeah. kinds i thought, I thought so too um does the cintiq feel a little more like paper or some of the other Not the really. wacom okay what do you have? That's a good pick. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. What do you have? I don't draw my iPad. I have I one of the best. It. I want to thank Aaron Mailer, who was, I was texting back and forth, and he said, he goes, oh, I just downloaded this. And he's like, holy smokes, it works. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and so uh, this is one of the best uses of AR I've seen in quite some time. And it's the new update to the Warby Parker. Uh, have you seen this? The Warby oh, Parker yep. eyeglasses. It. So the biggest problem with Warby Parker is you – is you're ordering all these and you, you have gotta to order a bunch of and boxes get the set and, and try them on. So they they you they're now using your uh your cam your your three D camera on their on your iPhone to match your No. Yeah, it is AR and glass it works. try on. Look at this. So it looks like Look your glasses Oh, that's cool. And I can turn my head. You're wearing glasses. And it's like I can say, Oh, and then you just go like this. Oh, I'd like to try a different pair of glasses, please. Oh, that's like really good and, idea. Um, I wish there was some way we could show that. You'd have to I come know. over here. Here, give it to me. I can I can try them, right? Yeah. I can try them on. Let me see here. Mm. Let me see. Oh, that's a nice look for me. Yeah. Then yeah. you just you just, just swipe. swipe over. Uh, these are the Bensons. Hmm. I look like Benson in these. But the, the. Do they have any? Oh, that's a good look. I think that's good. I look like an intellectual, right? Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, it's, it, yeah, or a defendant. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, is it's taking advantage of really understanding what, what, where you're. Uh, I, I take the fifth on that, Senator. <laughs> I, I, I didn't, I didn't know. I, uh, I, uh, I don't yeah, remember. Oh, I want some Haskell glasses. Do they help me program? Those are nice. The, there's oh, a guy yeah. named. If you turn, if you turn your head a little bit, you're really going to see the tracking. I mean, it is. Yeah, there's reflection Rock. too. There's yeah, like yeah, the, the, hi the highlights off the top. Yeah, it really. I mean, it is really, really, really well done. <laughs> These make me look like Jerry Lewis. Um, nice. Yeah. So a good use of AR. Yeah. And this is called their virtual try on. Warby used to be a sponsor. They're not anymore, so I don't have to say that. Warby Parker. My problem is I have a giant head, mm. and so most glasses <laughs> right. kind of look too small. I mean, these are the. I hope this is not. Like stretching the glasses frame to make it look no, better. No, I thought. Well, I may, maybe, but I, I think that it. 
they don't ha they don't have to. They would be able to do it. Also, I, I noticed that the temples of the frames don't actually plunge directly into your, into your skull. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, you don't need to know what it looks like over your ear, do, or maybe you do. I don't know. I'm sure that they had an issue with the tracking was not quite. You don't know uh, where the ears are going to be. Does this make me? But look even like, if even if you're going to get three or four and check it, I think that you're. It, this is it, great. It would be. It's just well, really. This is the first and first and that's a good look. But does it show you how good you look when you whip them off dramatically to make a point? Exactly. <laughs> you can't. But uh, try listen it. Listen to me. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I am not going to take this anymore. It's the point, Stanley. point, point. Thurston wide. I see. I need the Thurston wide. That's what I need. Well, these now, are does great. it help? You, does it, will it also show you what you would look like with contacts? <laughs> <laughs> uh, very nice. Yeah. That's Warby Parker, and uh, it's a it's actually a really great uh, glasses store by mail that are a lot less expensive because they're not owned by Luxottica. Yeah, and they're really good. Yeah, yeah. my daughter is a Warby uh, customer. Uh, very I, cool. I was committed to, to changing to Warby Parker specifically because I'm tired of going and paying incredible sums of money for Mon monopolistic cheap prices for plastic. Right, and 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 so, but I but I kept on going. Oh, I don't know which ones I want to order. And when this Kate, when when Aaron sent this to me the other day or yesterday, I was just like, oh, I, I nice. Now mm. I'm done. So I'm gonna thank you. So Aaron. probably within the next couple of weeks, you'll see me with my new Warby. Warby <laughs> does do prescription sunglasses, Patrick. I have prescription Warbies Ooh. that I wear, and I love them. Uh, they also do monocles. Oh, do they have a monocle try on? Because I don't know. I use my Warby monocle I frequently. I'm not even. <laughs> that's it. I'm done. There, I don't know if there's a pass nay option, however. Oh. Mr. Mr. Just you. What? It's just you. You're the last Mr. one. Mr. Jason Snell. Yes, sir. Thank you for bringing your dental equipment and yes, uh, you're welcome. And all of the gear. That We'd involves. like to see you again in six months. That's yeah. right. Remember to floss. Always a pleasure. Sixcolors.com. Six you colors. can see him com. anytime you want. He seems to file an awful lot. You're I'm really typing away writing. on my loud, uh, clacky keyboard. All the time. And man, the guy has more <laughs> podcasts yes. than... Uh, Find my tech podcast at Relay.fm and my other podcast at TheIncomparable.com. Yeah. You still doing The Incomparable Theater? Uh, David Lore writes he's that. He's got to write the script. It's up to him. He's, when the he's in charge of it now. <laughs> yeah. I, I do. I, I, I've given that to him. It's Good. all him. You know, the writer should. You know. I like doing. Yeah, yeah. Let the writer do the work. The writer do the I, work. I say. Yes. I say. <laughs> Thank you, Jason. It's always a pleasure. Thank you. Really love having you on. Uh, same with you, Mr. Alex Lindsay from the Pixel Core. Follow Thank him on the Twitter at A L E X L I N D S A Y. Took the two of them to replace Renee Ritchie. Is mm. Renee? He's in a tropical climb. I think somewhere. so. Undisclosed. Enjoying <laughs> Mobile emoji. Nation's yeah. uh, big bucks. Nice. And of course, the one, the only, the inimitable Andy Anatko from Anatko.com and Boston Public Radio, WGBH Boston, host of the Material Podcast with uh, Florence Ion, and also on <laughs> Relay FM. Yep. Pretty much everybody doesn't work for me, works for uh, Mike Hurley, right? That's pretty much how it works, yeah? Yeah. Thank yeah, you, we're Andrew. Gonna, we're, we're trying to get a bidding war is happening, but <laughs> up till now it hasn't worked yet. <laughs> I bid $200. We are all available for purchase by well, Spotify. I'll, 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 I'll That's tell right. you what, Leo. Just maybe saying. I'll just take my Android podcast and go to Relay FM. Oh! Like, that's, that's, that's a good idea. You should definitely do that. <laughs> Don't! Yeah, no, that. You're supposed to say counteroffer, <laughs> counteroffer. I apologize. I didn't realize that was how it worked. I'm sorry, Andy. <laughs> Don't ever threaten to take Mac Break Weekly somewhere else, though. That no, would no, break no, no, my no. heart. Break my heart. Hurley doesn't get this show. Thank Maybe. you, Andy. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Jason. Most importantly, thank you all for being here. We do this show every Tuesday around 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern Time, 1800 UTC. We have a live stream. Unlike all those other podcast networks, we have video. We were stupid enough to turn this into a TV station. So if you, That's why you please, have to wear pants. That's why you have to wear pants when you're on this show. Go to twit.tv slash live. You can watch and listen if you insist to a live stream. And if you are on the live stream, you really ought to be in the chat room at irc.twit.tv. That's all the other kids watching live, or at least a good portion thereof. Uh, as with those other guys, we also offer downloadable, I call it on demand, you might call it a podcast, at our website, twit.tv slash mbw for Mac Break Weekly, twit.tv slash mbw. And uh, while you may be searching... For some other show, material or the incomparable or 
on your <laughs> podcast client. You could also search for Mac Break Weekly and subscribe to it. That way you'd get it each and every Tuesday the minute it's available, hot off the presses, and you would never lack for something fabulous to listen to, right? Right. Thanks for being here. But now I'm sorry to say it's time to get back to work because break time is over. Bye-bye. Clicky, clicky, clicky. <laughs> clicky, clicky. clicky.